that. All right, you're live. Close that. Just check it, doing something real fast. Harry Comics, he's in here. That. Hang on, I'm just fixing everything. Swing with me. Swing with me. What's that? That's somebody's in the chat. Swing with me. No, what's that mean though? Swing. <laughs> swing with me. Don't you know what swinging is? Like swinging? I know you do. Swinging. He's like he's a big he's a big Spider-Man fan. Oh, folks. Well, anyway, dude. All right. This shows that I did another comic call today. I went to a shop looking for DCU variants again, and I ended up finding some, but I put most of them away because they're mostly damaged. Then I started buying a bunch of other crap. So basically, we're just going to bullshit, and at the same time, I'll show the, some of the books I picked up, and they, these guys can talk about whatever they want, and uh, I'll let them, they'll let me know if they think it's stupid or what. I think that's kind of fun. I'll can, tell you if it's stupid. They can tell me if I'm an idiot or... You're an idiot. I'm not going to give you prices I paid because it's all just basic, but nothing was super expensive. Uh, but yeah, Bueller, 10 50 cent comics for Bill. Oh, yeah. I wish they were 50. Thank you, Bueller. I wish you they were... split that shit up. <laughs> you, I... mean, you mean 3.3 uh, comics for each of us is what you meant to say. Three point, yeah, that's what he's saying. I think that's what you guys are saying. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to uh, split up super you take, chat. You take one of you take one of the comics and you cut it into thirds. I figure you cut that price in half, and then whatever it is, so two fifty divided, whatever, dude. We ain't going there. Okay, so it, during the process, I'm going to be rebagging these. So I was rebagged because they're all, dude. Whenever you guys dig, when you're done, is your hands dirty as hell? It depends on like the shop, like my, my regular shop. No, not usually because they, they turn over enough stuff that they're not usually that bad, but I've heard some horror stories. I know people that tell me that they go down to that Koch warehouse in Brooklyn over here by me, that, that the place is like, smells like cat piss and you need like a face mask and like latex gloves to like dig for comics. Is that the place where comic books NYC went? Yeah. That he did the video for. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Jake, how you doing? Um, so basically I'm going to switch camera so you can see the books too. Um, but basically I picked this one up. Uh, it's, it's a DCU variant. That's why I got it. Uh, but well, I'll show you cause the camera's not really showing. You see it. You can see it. The logo. Yeah. There's nothing really key about it except for that. But what I liked about it is it's actually a second printing and it only says second printing in the inside on the Indica part. Uh, but I got it because, well, of course, the DCU Universe variant, but it's a Magnola cover. I thought that was sick, dude. So uh, it might be cool to have Magnola sign it, and then it'll be a UPC logo variant with a kind of cool cover. Do you think that cover's cool or what? I like the cover. I, I, I like Mignola's work. I think it's, you know, I'm not a big Hellboy reader, but the other stuff that he's done, I, I've liked a lot. Well, I, th I think it's, yeah. I just I like the art and uh, the fact that it's a second printing and it's a DC Universe logo variant. I think that's kind of cool. What um? Let me ask you this, and uh, you know, hopefully this isn't like a really dumb question, but uh, just because it has the DC Universe logo doesn't make it inherently more valuable, right? Like not for all books. Well, it's like a little secret type of thing. Like eventually, the spec is that they will be more valuable because they're more rare. Because they weren't like distributed, they were in like three packs and weird shit like that. So yeah, no, I know. I remember that um, these guys, um, Tom and them, did a video about like all the DC Universe logos and like they were sold at Toys R Us and places like that. But but there's certain ones that are even more rare than others within those packs, right? Like some some yeah. are yeah, some go for big money. Some don't really go for much different than the regular version. Like so, I think someone said that there's like a Batman Adventures 12 that has like the DC. Uh, well, you know, I don't think that's been proven yet, but there's it's a possibility. Well, I, so so here's my question though: because of the way they printed them and how they just threw this logo on, is there even like a legit print number for these the way there is for like a normal book? 
I don't have the answers. I mean, I, I should do more research. I don't have the answers. That's kind of the problem. Uh, but I, I just honestly, I'm, I'm addicted to trying to find them. And uh, I, and you, if you go to any shop and you look at old DC stuff, like in those time periods, you're going to find one or two, like the other video I did a couple days ago. Where, yeah. I watched that one. I remember. Do one of those is super rare and I didn't know it. So that that's uh, behind me. I'm pressing one right now. Is it locked on that or, Oh, I see my screens messed up. Uh, one of those is like one of the super rare ones, thank God. So I'm actually trying to fix that for my pressing video. And I'm pressing. That's not it. a real press. That's like a t-shirt press. Dude, all presses are were originally t <laughs> you, know what, dude? With you. you know who you, you know who you sound like. Okay, do you so make a, do you make like grilled cheese in that? That's dude, just a mini press. How many sandwiches oh, could you make me? at the same time in there? Like how many how many sandwiches could you press at once? In that one? Yeah. I don't know, maybe like six. I can make that's, like, pretty, that's pretty good. Hell yeah, dude. I haven't done that yet. Maybe I'll do a video where I press a comic and a sandwich. At the same time. Yeah. yeah. So whatever. <laughs> okay, so you you think that's an okay book then, I guess? I mean I, I mean I like the I like the cover. I think if you're gonna get it signed, I mean that's pretty cool. And and that it's kind of rare. I mean, yeah, they are rare. Uh, it's just how rare, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure, I don't know. I, I think most of them don't survive because they're in those three packs and they get all crushed and everything. And, uh, like, parents, parents bought them at Toys R Us for their kids who, like, ripped them up and, like, colored yeah, them. all that type of stuff. Now, I picked up this next one. Um, I just picked it up because of the cover. I don't think there's any key about it. But it's a... Batman Annual number 16 with the Joker on it. What do you think about that? Who's uh, Do you know who the artist is on it? I can't read it, but I can find out. That one looks pretty sick. Yeah, I like that. I like that one. I haven't seen that one before. That's why I bought it. Uh, hang on, let me see. Oh, you know, without... Honestly, without... it's. It, I mean, it says... Art by Vince Gariano. But I don't think that's the signature on here. I'll show you the... Of course, I love Joker stuff, so that's why I bought it. But I'll show you the signature right there. Do you see it? Yeah. yeah I don't, I don't have any idea. So, I don't know. I bought it just because of the cover. I think I bought it for like $3. I mean, I know it wasn't cheap, but... I don't know. I was trying to find different things, and I started finding other things, and they just have random boxes full of stuff. You know what I mean? So, so far, we're okay on my, my pick, my dig. Whoa, hey. Whoa. How many books did you get total? How many did you pick up? I got, like, about 20 books. Hey. Is that a lot? Comic baller. I, I mean, I think that's a lot. Well, you'll see... Like, and then I'm in spec it on the whole spawn thing, and Hope knows about it. I've just been kind of doing these picks about everything. I found this. There were different spawns, but I liked this one. I don't know if it's rare or not, but it's spawn 250. 250. Yeah, that's, that's not super rare, but probably a major print book. Yeah, it, it was a pretty big, it was a big milestone book. So I think that one has a, a much higher print run than the rest of like in the 200s, but it's still, I wouldn't say it's common. Because it's still hard to find. Yeah, I, I just picked it up because it was clean and it's like a double size. And uh, I like the cover. So, whatever. I just couldn't. I don't think I, I could probably go to like three or four local comic shops and probably couldn't find 20 issues to buy that are worth buying. Oh, well, hey, Bi that's sorry, why I say that's a lot. Bill, uh, Mark Snowden in the chat says uh, Sam Keith is the cover artist on that on that Batman annual. Okay, cool. Thanks, Mark. That's probably what it was in Keith. It it's kind hard of to read his. It's hard to read his signature when it's that small. Normally, it stands out. You could you could read it really well. Yeah, but it did look like a K kind of. So then I was on, I'm on this whole thing with uh, picking up Hulk variant covers, the Red Hulk, the McGinnis low. Yeah, those are. Oh wait, so yeah, that's number six, and that's a variant. So I liked it, so I bought it. I pick those up every time I see them because 
they're they're not common either. They they slipped under the radar for most people. Well, that's the whole you know plan. You know what I mean? Like keep picking them up till one day, all of a sudden they're the next hot thing. And unfortunately, I'm doing a lot of that lately. Of course, I'm looking for the She Hulk and all that too. But I think Hulk is stupid. Oh come on, man! Wow, no, no one likes the Hulk. Now I had got a bunch of variants, but some of them were kind of in bad shape. So this one's the uh, number eight variant. You do you, you see that one, uh, Hulk? Yeah, I mean I've seen them, but like I said, they're still you, you don't see them very often. So my plan is to try to get them all. That's Sal Bashema or Basima, I think. Basima. Basima. So I get that. I mean, if I can get these things signed, I will. Hey, Carl, thanks for the five bucks. I got to split it three ways now. Hey, hey Carl. Yeah, Carl, can you give us a nice even number next time? It's not <laughs> it's it's divisible by three after you divide it by two. <laughs> that's about what I'm getting from. But I appreciate it, Carl. Thank you. Uh, then I got this Hulk 7. I picked one of these up the other night, too, uh, Hulk. Uh, so I got two of those now. I like that cover. Yeah, that's a sick cover. But yeah, it's funny. They're there. They're available in shops. People just don't buy them. And and like you said, they're pretty probably pretty rare. Well, because well now the only thing is though, most of that Hulk run is not in continuity. Do you think it was a ma it wasn't very a mass produced? Do you think? No, it wasn't mass produced because there was a ton of second. I mean, there were second prints, but they they didn't have a high. There wasn't a lot of them, and like I said, you never see them, and the variants you never see. Carl just gave another dollar so that yeah, it's to Carl, make it even. Carl's the man. Oh, man. Oh, he's the best. Let's. I gotta say something to the people in here, and I don't know how many people are in here because I can't. Well, I guess twenty nine. How many? Twenty nine. That's pretty good for right now. Um. Right I just now. want to say to everyone that they're, they're my subs. Um, you guys don't have to super chat me. I mean, I appreciate it, but that you know, it's cool. I appreciate it. Love you guys. Uh, but you know, he wants you to save it till we're not on, so he doesn't have to share. Yeah, do me a favor. That's <laughs> all he's trying to say right now. He goes, "Yeah, when I'm the only one on the screen, yeah, then super chat me." But if there's other people. Do not super chat me. It's cool. Whatever you see in the comment it's... cartel of the video, just don't super chat. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're trying to melt me. That's what she <laughs> Okay, so this one's cool because I see Frank Cho all the time. And uh, that's a Cho. And a lot of these are Cho's, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm probably going to get a lot of them signed. He's a really cool guy. Um, So there's a uh, number nine variant. I've noticed there's a lot of girls in all these covers. Like this one, they're tying them up, and this one, they're like all attacking them. It's kind of cool. You prefer the covers that have mostly just men on them, right? That's what you're trying to say. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Dude. Okay, so <laughs> we're done with the Hulks. Thank God. Holy uh, Jesus. So I was just digging through the <laughs> digging through the stuff, and I, I feel like if you find old Venoms, you should buy them. So, this, I found two of these Venom number twos, the first cameo of, of Noel. I mean, are those, I like, the, are those the first print ones, or those are... Yeah, they were like in boxes. Those are the first prints. So, I said, hey, why not? Because I think Noel's going to be big eventually, if he's not already. How many um, threes do you have? I have like three or four graded, and I got a couple raw. Can you zoom out your camera, Bill, a little bit? You want me to zoom out? Why? Yeah, the, the chat says they can't see the books all the way. Well, I mean. Well, I'm just telling you what the chat says, man. All right. I'm, if you don't I, want to, then don't. Is that is that uh, better, guys? Yeah, that's better. Isn't it bigger than Hulk? I don't know about that. No, anyway. Necro, uh, you're, about to, you're about to get banned. <laughs> hey, calm down. I'll but, ban you, Necro. So what's cool is, I mean, I like Johnny Cates runs and stuff, and uh, but anything key regarded no, I mean they were in these like mixed boxes. So I was just digging. So I got two of those, and then this is really awesome. I got these. Now they're not the tongue ones, but.
But, I mean, that's a big deal now because it's the first cameo of Dylan Brock. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, who's his son. So, it's. I, I mean, I do have a tongue one, but to find these two, the lighting's all messed up, to find these two uh, just not bought, in, you know, they shouldn't be in, like, random boxes. But what I think is, you know, the store just didn't have these buyers, and they just, you know what I mean? I don't kind know. Of- I even go to small little nothing stores, and I literally never find much of anything at all. Well, that's what this store is. It was a little one, and I've been there once before, and I said I'm going to go look for variants. But, I mean, I mean, dude, I'll take these cover. I love that cover, first of all, and the fact that it's, he has a son, and it's, it's in there. That's to me get him for cover price still. That's pretty good. No, I mean that. Yeah, cover price is cool. I mean, yeah, I'd grab that. They did yeah, one yeah. of those. They did a convention cover for that one. That's like black and white. I think that cover is really cool. I don't. I don't. I don't know why nobody cares about that one. But I actually, I think I ordered one or something. I don't know. I have to look. Yeah, it's one of like the PAX covers or whatever. It's. I mean, I think it's cool, but. So then they had, of course, they just had, they were just in random boxes with old comics. They had the Venom First Host, number three, and that's the first appearance of the Sleeper. I thought that could be key because it's like a new symbiote, I guess. I feel like that, I felt like that series was really like underwhelming. I get it, but if that guy ever comes back, there it is. You know what I mean? Now, I did find some cool stuff. I'm getting to it. The lighting is not that great, I don't think. But I did find this, dude, and I was pretty happy about that. Oh, that's a cool one. The the first uh, appearance and origin of Lee Price's Venom, and that's a sick. That's a number one. That was just. I don't know how much that's going for, but I bet it's not too cheap. It's probably like twenty bucks or something. Has to be decent because there's multiple prints on that cover, right? Uh maybe, but that's definitely the number one first print, and it's a new Venom. Uh, person you know lee price or pierce or whatever so but i like that cover though so i thought i feel like i got lucky on that now here's where i really feel i got lucky because when the news broke about the the loki the necro god that book right there was kind of hot it's probably still hot the mighty thor at the gates of valhalla i think it's a one shot that was a one shot, yeah. So they had it, and uh, and what's and I, the key with that? What's the key with that book? It's like the first cameo appearance of Loki, the Necro God, or something like that. When that Loki stuff went off, people started digging. Or is it Null? No, I think it's Loki, the Necro God. I don't know. I, I have a couple copies of that. I'll have to take a look later and see. Uh, open it up and see see what's going on in there. Yeah, it's the first cameo. Of Loki, and then I think there's another one in. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the other cover cover for that oh. book's pretty cool too. The variant cover for that has a uh, Malekith on it. So you know what's really cool? It was in there in another there box. There it you go. In there in another box, unbagged and boarded, and it's in perfect condition. Yeah, that's a do- that's a dope cover. Plus, you know what's cool about that is is War of the Realms is about to start, and that's basically he's the he's the he's the main player in that. Yeah, probe it's Civil War Eight. Now I've like stocked up on those Civil War Eights because there's multiple secret keys in that book. But but yeah, that's dude, the, uh, that's the Ulysses one with all the visions in it. Yep. Yeah, that's a cool book. Anyway, I mean, just all those pages are cool because there must be what like six or seven different scenes in that book. I just think it's so interesting that they knew about the whole Loki the Necro God thing and the Necro Sword like so long ago, and and whether or not they planned on moving forward with it or not uh you know well jason jason aaron said that he's had this whole story lined up for like multiple years like that's what he's been building towards this whole time that he's been writing these books and donnie cates keeps mentioning jason aaron and ribic or whatever how he loves jason aaron's writing and i think that's why cates brought Noel back because they're going to do... I don't know, dude. I, I'm specking hard on that Loki the Necro God. So, you know, I hope it pays off. But I'm just so happy I found that variant. That's the first thing I found. I'm like, no way. And then I, after a while, I kept looking. 
And I mean, I got these for cover, and they're not cover. Like, I'm pretty sure they're hot. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they're not. So cool. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> we all know who that was, dude. Oh, this man. Fucking IBS at the house again. Oh, damn. All right, so, dude, I've been specking hard on these. Uh, that's what she said. Uh, uh, ash cans. I'm starting to get addicted to, like, independent ash cans. Yeah, those are cool, man. So I, I've picked up some newer ones, and he had a bunch, so I went crazy. So I got that Fight Club 3 that just came out. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I think that's the David Mack. If I ever see him again, I'll have him sign it. Yeah, that, that's the Mac cover. His covers are great. Yeah, he's really cool. I'm supposed to do a, a live interview with him soon, dude. I'm just waiting for his reply. I can't wait. Uh, that would be so great. I, I can't wait for that. Now, this is my second one, the hardcore number one. Uh, I love that storyline. I don't know if you guys have been reading it, but it's sick, dude. I picked up issue one and two. I just never got – I haven't gotten around to reading them. It's really good. And now I have two of these. Ash can because I bet you they make that into a movie. Um, also, the guy went back because I told him I even started a pool list with the guy. I said, I'll put something on my list if you give me all the ash cans. And he's like, Okay, so I got uh, Stranger Things. Yeah, I have that one, that's a good one. So I got two of them. Um, I there's no reason for me. Well, I guess I can show you it's you know. I got two of them. I don't think that's going to be, I don't know what's going to happen with that. And then, I mean, these ones, I think the most, the better ones are Fight Club and Hardcore. And then the last one I got was uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000, which is probably, probably kind of rare. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but whatever, I'm starting to try to collect those. I don't know why, but. Ash cans are cool, man. It's a cool little market for those. I do have a couple of those cyber frog ones. Uh, those, those shot up in price, right? Yeah, I found those in a bin, and I'm just waiting for him to drop his book, his comic. It He's should be coming out, being sent out pretty soon. Yeah, when that happens, thought, that's when I'm on a list. Yeah, I'm on a list to get one, but oh, did you? Put, did is that you, like a kick? He did like a Kickstarter. Yeah, right? he did the or he made like, or, Yeah, he made half a million dollars on that, dude. You know what the first thing he did was. And I admit, I watch him because I know him. I've met him multiple times. He's done art for me. I know there's a big conspiracy with all him and all this other weird stuff, but I don't, I don't get into that. But, uh, you know, I – and Ashcan is like a preview book that's smaller than a normal comic. Okay, and then, you know, he, I like watching him draw and draw the art and stuff. So, but, yeah, that Indiegogo. So you bought some of that, Hope? Yeah, I bought the Jawbreakers one from – was it Zach? Boyer, is that his name? And then the Cyber Frogs, and then the uh, uh, what's the other one where the the army vets get dropped into the to the woods, and it's all these women trying to kill them. Oh man, I'm trying oh. to remember the name of it. But there's some veteran who did a, a Indiegogo fund too about that. So now they're all friends. Is that the whole group of them? Yeah, they all know each other because they're all involved in that whole. Comic skate, comic skate thing, and all that stuff. But I mean, I don't care about that. I just, I mean, if it's a cool comic, it's a cool comic. I don't care who puts it out. And then if a veteran's going to put out a comic, that's cool. I'm, I'm definitely down with that. So Bueller and everyone else, again, I think all about kind of explain it. But an ash can is like sent out as a preview before the book comes out. You know, just the stores, the stores can order them if they want, and they're like mini books. And basically, they're definitely probably probably the rarest of anything, right? It depends yeah. on what you know. What yeah, yes, in the sense that most of those most of those ones go out like one per store. Like when Image does an ash can, they'll send one out per store. Yeah, by, that's, like that's the weird. FOC, so that the store can kind of see it and see like, hey, do we want to you know get this? Mm -hmm. And a lot of stores just kind of like chuck their ash cans in like piles because if there's not a like a large market of people walking into comic store saying can i get an ash can do you know that they actually have to order it 
Some they'll yeah. sell free, but the stores they have a choice. You know, some people don't order it. Oh, issues. Uh, he must have to go poo. No, I'm, I'm still here. Yeah. Oh, the name of that other uh, Indiegogo was Ravage, Kill All Men. And it's oh, two okay. army veterans crash in a mystical jungle populated by a lost tribe of toxic warrior women that hunt men, enslave them, and then kill them. So I'm, that sounds right up my alley. Yeah, it does. Uh, I, I was going to say I have a... Uh, what? This is, this is an ash can for Murder Falcon. Yeah, that's cool. See, that's cool. Just, just for the people who who aren't like super familiar with them. So this comes out like well prior to the book. A lot of times Ash Cans will only have like three, four, five pages from the comic and then maybe like an interview sort of thing from the writer or kind of like a solicitation text explaining the storyline or sometimes it'll have sketches and drawings and stuff like that. And so you know, if you're a collector of the series or the series ends up having longevity, a lot of times the ash can is, is kind of technically maybe a first appearance of sorts, uh, you know, because of the background. What's cool about this one with the Murder Falcon one is it's, it's actually the entire comic book. That's exactly like my hardcore. It's, it's all just, black, and it's, white. It's black and white. Like it's not colored at all. It's entirely black and white, but it's it's the entire comic book for the first issue of, of Murder Falcon. Yeah, I have the same thing with my hardcore. I think that's some, the other ones I have are low. Hope's got something he wants to show something. No, I so said I got Ash Can the Punisher, but it's just uh, it's more of a summary of all like different panels from the first couple, like first from War Journal, War Zone, and the Punisher Limited series. They've definitely progressed as time has gone on because like the the Hulk one that we talked about, the wedding one, you have that one too. Four eighteen, right? yeah, and that's just like an advertisement. Yeah, it just has pictures, and then it has like you know the wedding guest invite list. It's like sometimes they're kind of cheesy. I think that they've progressed over time to kind of be like more indicative of what the actual comic book is about instead of you know what they used to be. But uh, you know they have a bunch of cool like old uh, image um, ash cans from like when they launched all those like first books. So like Young Bloods and those are awesome. And, a lot of those are signed too. All, all of them were so like I have yeah. like a I have a Wildcats one that's like and they were sealed so you would know if they were open so I have a Wildcats one signed by Jim Lee that's pink and it has like a seal on the edge so I can't even read it otherwise I'd be like breaking the the seal. Yeah, that's cool. I've seen a lot of of those ash cans from Image with Liefeld stuff, like all that stuff. He's always signing them all. Um, but yeah, I like ash. You know, ash cans are, are starting to turn now. More of the independents are doing ash cans now. But like, for instance, the Batman Who Laughs, number one. I on one of my shows, uh, I did. Um, I kept saying, "Oh, this is key. This is key." It was in like a Justice League or something like that, where they had like a four-page preview of Batman Who Laughs in it, and uh, it's almost like an ash can inside a regular comic book. Like a lot of books are doing previews now. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, they had that in like three separate books that month too. It wasn't just Justice. Right. It was in like Harley Quinn, the Justice League, and and like a third book, I think. And, and the thing is, at that time, I had access to books early, and I was flipping through them, and I didn't look through all of them. But you're right, there were about three or four, you know, that had them. Not all of them though, but still, it, it's almost like a, it's almost like that Amazing Spider-Man, whatever, with the first Spider, Spider Twenty Nine. It's like a preview. Yeah. Uh, and but it, it's not the first full, but even though it looks like it is, it's it's the same. I don't know. Anyway, I'm just gonna go back to what we're. Hopefully, people learn about ash cans. Uh, so I found that I had to buy that cover. Um, I, I just love that cover. I don't know if it's a suit. It's not a key or anything, but it's where we. I love that cover. So and whenever I see it, I had to buy it. It's a clean enough where. Maybe with the press, I could get a nine eight, but that would be a sick cover to get a, a signature with the right color ink on it. Yeah, like I think black actually would be perfect uh, if you did it in the white somewhere. That's or, what I'm saying. If you did it in that, was it negative space or whatever it's called? Yeah, and it's Mike Giordano Jr., so that might not be too. That might not be very hard to do. That'd Plus, be pretty sick. Daniel Way. I mean, we'll see. I, look, that's the thing. I get. Stuff like that, and if I can get it signed, it's it's awesome. And then, of course, there was the 
This was just sitting in there too. It's not like it was on the wall, but it's that Journey into Unknown Worlds one that just came out. Uh, but it's that uh, super whatever his name is. Uh, super log. Super log variant, and I remember that was hot, so I'm like, I'll buy it. So I mean, for cover, I'll take it. Most of those were sold out. I'm getting close to the end, so. So then I got this. Uh, let me. Um, but like I'm saying, I went in there to find like Red She Hulk, or I went in there to find uh, DC logo brands. I got a couple of those things, but I ended up uh, just buying all types of different things, like this Judge Dread number one. There was a retailer incentive in a box. So, I mean, to me, that's one yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's a one. That's a one for ten cover, I think. And that's the Judge Red Toxic one too. Mm -hmm. So that's number one retail incentive. I can't pass that up. You know, it's at least a. Well, I think they say one in ten, but if it's a retail incentive, it's only one per store. So, I think. Well, I don't think too many stores ordered more than ten copies of Judge Dread Toxic anyway. I don't think most stores ordered much of any Judge Dread anything. No. I, I had to speak to my store to ask them to, you know, I don't have a pull list set up. I don't, I'm not a big fan of pull list because I just like to walk the shelves, but uh, I'm a big Judge Dredd fan. And I kind of had to like say like, you know, I'll buy Judge Dredd if you order it because. Um, they told me they can't order it unless they're, they go through Diamond UK or they have a Diamond UK distributor or something. My LCS couldn't do it. That's why I don't no. know if you remember those Judge Dreads I couldn't get. Um a while, a few months back, January, and I had to actually order them from Sweden and somewhere over there. Oh yeah, I, I sent you one of those. I think right, the first issue. Yeah, my LCS couldn't even order them. They said no, we don't have a UK distribution, whatever, so we can't even order Judge Dread. I think they don't know what they're talking about. I in, that, in in the US, Judge Dread is is distributed by IDW, the solo titles. Maybe maybe they mean like they can't get like the UK, uh, like the the um. The 2000 AD magazines, maybe they mean they can't get those. I have the one here. They should have been able to buy anything they wanted. That, uh, I mean, I'm not. Well, I can't argue with the store if they say they can't get it. I'm like, okay. I know, but we can argue with you. No, like these ones. <laughs> Wait, I want. Yeah, to... well, th those were like the UK variant ones for one of the stores. Oh, all right. Well, I, didn't... Here, I locked on you. I want to see them. Those, um, are for, those are for final judgment. Judge, dude, judge, those are judge sick, death. dude. Who did yeah, that? Dude, that's why I saw the. Actually, you know, I saw one Bueller's uh, on Bueller's preview thing, and I was, and I even commented, I was like, "Man, I got to get those things." And then I go to the LCS, and he's like, "No, no dice," and had to pay like, I don't even know how much shipping to get those here. I don't even want to think about it. They were only probably, about probably cost you like twenty bucks just to ship them. Yeah, it was it was it was more than the books, but those covers are sick. The regular so. U.S. cover for that was pretty was pretty hot because Jock did the covers to that. It was only like a two part series, but but Jock did both of them, and and they were yeah, they were good. They were pretty cool too. Yeah, they were selling pretty high for a while too. <sighs> yeah, so I, I, I was digging, and, and then I found this. I mean, most people probably wouldn't buy. Is it flipped or is it straight? No, you're good. You're good. So I just got a, a sketch cover, Grim. Grim Tales of Terror number one. I figure that's probably pretty rare since it's from Xenoscope. Uh, and so, you know, sketch covers actually command big prices sometimes. I thought I could get an artist to do something sick on it. I don't know. Get Chin to do something on it. Yeah, I probably will, actually. That's a good idea. I'll make it like a panda with Hulk nuts on it or something. You know what? That's what I'm going to do, dude. Something weird. We'll sign it for you. Now, most people. <laughs> Most people wouldn't buy this one, but Infinity Wars. Yeah, I wouldn't have bought that one. Number three. But dude, for me, it's it's a key. Even though the, the characters are stupid. I, mean, I, mean, I have whole, all those books, so I can't really talk trash. But No, but they had them all, right? But, I mean, this is the key to me about the whole thing. Is that interior where it's the first, like, brief or full appearance of all those new characters from the warps? Oh, those warped characters, yeah. So that's a pretty... To me, that's a pretty big – there's just too many first appearances to pass it up when it's sitting in a bin. And there was only one anyway, so. 
The only characters out of that whole thing that I want to see more of is the uh, the Punisher Power Pack. Did you read that one? Uh uh, I like the weapon Hex. You remember you remember Power Pack though, right? Oh, yeah. Super superhero kids. Yeah. They had like Punisher amalgamated with the uh, the the Power Pack kids, so they, it was like the Punisher Pack, and it was like a bunch of like killer kids. That's a cool cover, but that's a, it's a stupid book. How did you, you know what? How did you feel about those, those four one shots that they did? I thought that, they were stupid. They're dumb, right? Yeah. But, I mean, but that's a really, that's a, it's a really cool cover, but it was a dumb, it's a dumb premise. Trying to make more money. They were following the key thing. First appearances, number ones, the whole route that Marvel usually does to sell books. <laughs> but then I found this um, love and romance variant sitting in a box you know whatever that that was the hot cover for that for the yeah they were they were hard to find that week people were selling them online i think for like 15 to 20 dollars i i wanted one because i liked the cover but i just wasn't willing to spend more than 15 like 15 bucks on that it was nonsense you know that's a good example of like stores getting screwed over by the foc because those books were all one shots so it's kind of hard for a store to estimate how well they're going to sell and at the time that FOC was coming, they didn't basically have anything other than the A cover art. So all four of those books had an A, a B, and a C cover. And a lot of stores just ordered like a few copies of cover A because they had no idea if it was even going to sell or what the covers were going to look like. Which is stupid to me. Why, why make three covers and not show people what the options are? I think that that's... Now, how, did, how do you know that they didn't know? Because I've worked in a shop before when they do the previews orders. And they can see the covers. Not, Not all always. Time. The covers aren't always released by FOC. Like Hulk, uh, that that like that Hulk variant we were talking about. That the FOC passed today. Nobody still has cover art for it. There's still no cover art available. All anybody knows is it's a Joe Bennett one for twenty five. That's it. Yep. Yeah, I want to talk about Immortal Hulk in a sec. I'm almost done, and I want to talk about that. But the, I thought that was a good pickup for. I mean, for if you. If you look when the previews catalog comes out, that's my biggest beef. I always pick up the previews catalog because I, I like to look at it. But for a lot of upcoming books, it'll say like the regular cover artist. And a lot of times it will say variant by TBA, variant by TBA. Like they're telling yeah. you there's going to be a variant, but they're not telling you who's going to do it. They're not telling you if it's going to be an incentive or not. They're not telling you what the ratio is going to be. It's I, to I go to Midtown. And then I look at the previews two months away. It's it's almost as you know pre-orders. It's almost the same as the previews guide. They do they do their pre-orders from the previews guide. That's how they list them. But there's I, not always there's not always pictures there. Sometimes you just no. have to be like, okay, cool, I'll buy this. I I get it what you're saying, but when I what I'm saying is, I you know when you know the artists, which artists are hot, you can you can kind of foresee stuff. That's kind of what I do when I'm doing my pre-orders. These are my last books, and then I'm going to switch the camera off. I, I had to pick these up. They're two Harley Quinn number one rebirths. Uh, I usually always pick up number ones, rebirth. But, you know, I like that cover. It's Harley Quinn. I could probably sell that book for 15 bucks, maybe. I don't know. No? Yeah? You wouldn't pick that up? Would you pick up a Harley Quinn one rebirth? I, I'm not. I'm just not a Harley Quinn I got, fan. I got I, I got a Harley Quinn one and the one in multi packs. Multi pass. Multi pass. <laughs> Dude, what kind of hammer lock on you and switch my camera? Hang on. So where where was that in? Mar uh, Walmart. When I was looking at those big hundred oh, giants, yeah. they had they had a couple different all the rebirth number ones. That's actually cool. And then they, and then these are the other ones. They, oh wait a minute. There's three of them in there. I don't know what else is in there. You gotta look. And then they had the Marvel ones. That's actually cool. If you get all those number one, those are all rebirth. Yeah, they're all. Yeah, the whole thing is supposed to be all number ones. Flash, Batman, Injustice, Suicide Squad, Supergirl, Harley Quinn. Detective Comics, so I'm guessing I have all the different ones. Yeah, I've seen that. I'm gonna lock in on you. That's the uh, that's the Wildcats one that I was talking about. 
So they yeah. did, a, did a string of these ash cans for all of the image books. And most of, like you said, most of them are signed and, and hand numbered. So this one's signed by Jim Lee and it's, they did 5,000, which isn't a super small number, but I think a lot of these just didn't survive because I you know, for the time period and, and, you know, the, the brand, I think a lot of people were just like, that's cool. And like chucked them. I think it's cool that you have the little seal on it. Yeah. I never, I never opened it up. I've had this for a while. I have a couple oh, other ones too. I just, I don't know where, where they are. I, I made such a mess in here, digging around, looking for books to sell. And, uh, I, I made the mess, so. I made the mess. I made the mess. <laughs> Man, let's but I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big Ashcan fan, so. Welcome welcome to that club. Yep. I only buy Hulk Ashcans. That's it. Because oh. you don't have taste, but. Weird. Let me see if that works. As I hang out with you two. Well, that's just further proof that you have yeah, no. Say taste. further proof of I don't have taste. The fact that the fact that you're hanging out with Bill and I at like, well, what time is it for you? Ten thirty. Yeah, at ten thirty at night, you're hanging out with me and Bill. It's you clearly have no taste. No, I Dude. just have no life. <laughs> Bueller, <laughs> Bueller said. Bueller said, "Open it. There's money inside. Maybe." <laughs> nice try. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fall for that. They Not really, again. They really mass produced actually 5,000. Well, here's how it goes there's about 3,000 comic book stores left in the United States. So if you think, uh, you know, one per store, retail incentive, or something like that, you know, there's, there's only 3,000 of them. Is, that, is the number that small? Yeah, and it's dropping too. Well, does that count like online only retailers? No, I think it's actual brick and mortars. So, I mean, then we know the number is still somewhat higher, though, because there's a lot of now online-only retailers out there. Well, how do you know they're only? I mean, you don't think they have a shot? Us? Well, no. Look at, some of of these, look at some of these people that are super popular on um, on Instagram and stuff. Like, I've ordered before from, like, Slabbed Heroes, and he sells raw books as well as Slabbed books. And so uh, he, he, has a, he, he, has, he has a Diamond account. He orders his books through a Diamond account. Like... You know, you you okay. can set up a web store and and get authorized as a diamond retailer. So then you would get certain incentives since you are a retailer. I, I well, I still well maybe they include that too. All I know is the I used to work at a shop in the uh, recently, and the number was around three thousand now and dropping. So uh, whether it's whether it's the combined effort of people from their houses considering it a brick and mortar because there are certain restrictions with diamond you know he's got to probably he's probably ordering a shitload i mean the he, he's got to be ordering a shitload because he's offering those cgc 98 fast passes on ebay yeah and uh, i bought from him before and i got it within a couple weeks he's got to be paying a lot of money because and getting a lot of books but somehow i just don't know how he fast passes a modern variant or whatever and gets it to me and and is not losing money. I need to figure out that game because I would like to play it, you know? Well, I mean, the discount you get through Diamond for a lot of the publishers is different, but for most of them, your percentage gets higher as the number of books that you order gets higher. So I think, you know, in general, most guys get like a 30 to 40% discount off cover when they're ordering these modern books. And then how much is it to fast pass a book with CGC? Like 40, a modern book, like 40 some, 40 some dollars? Yeah, but dollars? shipping and all that. I mean, I guess when you're sending in mass qualities, quantities, but I think I know the percentage. I think they, most comic shops, I don't know if this is some sort of secret, but from what I remember, they pay 55%. So, yeah, so, so like I've seen the application for like a diamond account. And so, Depending on the publisher, though, there's different requirements to get that. So not every store is going to get the big percentage because if you're ordering a small amount of titles, you, you don't qualify for the the biggest you know discounts. Well, I think that some of the store and I and I could this could be what I remember. Don't quote me, but is that like some of them like uh, like image? 
I don't think they give 55%. Uh, or I don't think they give 45%. I think they give a less amount. Uh, but bigger titles like Marvel and DC, I think that they're around 50 to 60, somewhere in there that they, you have, so if I, if the book's a dollar, the buy, Right, so he's paying $2 for a $4 book. Well, a little bit more than that. So let's just say it's a dollar, you know, it's 55 to 60 cents for the store. I mean, still though, so, so what does it cost to fast track a modern book with CGC? It depends I on how you send in. I can, well, if you were talking modern, we're, yeah, we're, well, no, he only sends in moderns. Moderns are just a flat rate. It's there's no value. It's not it, it's not value based like a like a classic book. So it, it has to be a set price. Like it's forty dollars to fast track a book. I'm looking right now. Um, I just know I usually pay eighteen dollars. I think to get a book graded, and then where is this? Right, name? that's just that's just like for regular time. Right? Yeah. So I, they add I, I have to actually like submit <laughs> let me see services and fees there we go okay modern fast track thirty dollars okay so if shipping he ships so many at one time that that cost is dispersed over multiple orders, right? So if he sends out 30 books at once, then he's only paying a couple dollars per book to ship it. So let's say the book cost him $2. He pays $30 to fast track it and it costs an extra two to $3 per book towards shipping. That's $35 that he's spending. On okay. Market. And then return shipping too. All right. So add another three. Now you're at 38. What's he charging you? Okay. 50 Let's He's say charging fifty 60 bucks. Let's say he plus, charges sixty bucks, okay? Plus shipping. Plus he charges you another fourteen dollars for the flat rate shipping to you. Okay. So let's say seventy five. He's making he's making he's making like twenty five dollars on every book that he sells. I don't think he's making that much, but you I mean maybe twenty. But my my the thing is, look, at the same time he's guaranteeing nine eight. So how many does he send and then get nine sixes? How many books is he stuck with that are nine sixes that he can't move or he moves some right, so, Sorry. So I and I and I watch him and he does live shows and he shows a lot of unboxings. Number one is he does the pre-screening because his orders are high enough that you know he, he pre-screens out the books that aren't a nine point eight and he oh, sends an extra you're right. you're right. That's the way. So, so yeah. when he gets his package back, he's getting a separate envelope that has all of his, like, his loser books. And he only got charged five bucks each. Yeah. Right. And then usually those are the books that he'll, like, throw up on his site in, like, a special package or a deal where it's like, yeah, that book could be selling for $30. But he's saying, hey, you could buy this book for, like, eight bucks because it's not going to get a 9.8. I tried already. Here, here's what I think about him. I love it. He Me too. I think it's great. Uh, if you if you're early enough and you can spec hard enough to know which book's going to be hot, and you order it early enough from him on eBay, it'll be a reasonably priced book. Uh, Dude, I think I think he sold CGC nine point eights of the of the Spider Gwen for like hundred and fifty bucks. The the hot variant. Yeah, the the In Hyuk Lee one that sells for like eight hundred dollars. I think he like pre sold those for like hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars. And before he knew. Before he knew. Same yeah. thing also that, that Harley 57 that blew up. I think he put a couple of those in his like $30 book page because no one knew it was going to be hot. So people pre-ordered it a 9.8 for $30. They were selling for more than that raw. No, because I saw, I remember that one because I was going to buy it and I couldn't, I didn't pull the trigger. I think it was more than that. What's the name of this seller you're talking about? Slab Heroes. Slab Slab Heroes. He's on IG. Slab Heroes. Okay. I mean, he's Somebody really cool. Him, so. Look, I, this, you know what? He's just he's really transparent about everything because he does live unboxings of his CGC stuff all the time. He does. He's done tutorials on his page where he shows people how he humidifies the books, how he presses his books. Like, you know, he's he's a he seems like a really really cool guy, and, and you know he's he's running like a really great business. I mean, whatever it is, it's a good business plan, and it doesn't seem like 
He's not overextending it's himself. Working he's, for him. What's so, that? It's working for him nicely. And I'm going to show you what I bought from him, and I'm going to tell you why. So I bought this. I got this Art Germ Supergirl 23 foil. And there was a reason, because when I was working at the comic store, every one of these these foils, do you remember them? They all had, like, Christmas wrapping paper, and they were all damaged. Like, they are all damaged. So I'm like, dude, instead of trying, because I wanted to get a 9-8 of this, instead of trying to send in my own, I just straight ordered it, and it was cheap. And I bet you there aren't a lot of 9-8s of this foil cover, because they all have dings. So that's when I used them, when I thought, the rarity of a 9-8 foil is the best way to use his system. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he's good, man. And and he, he communicates really well with people. If there's something you're looking for that he has time to order for you, he'll, he'll order it if that's what you're requesting. I mean, he, he's, he's running just like a really good business, man. It's definitely a guy that, you know, he takes pride in what he does too, because he's obviously, you know, he does a lot of cool stuff, man. He shows too. He buys a lot of slab books on eBay that are like nine fours, nine sixes that you can get for a lot cheaper. And he he'll talk about it on his on his live shows. And he he studies the pictures to see if he thinks that the <laughs> issues that cost it like a nine four are pressable that he can fix and get a higher grade and turn and turn a decent profit on some of those books. Yeah, I think you know what I kind of love about the show with you guys is that I mean we we have all different knowledge in all different ways, but. It, and, it, and sometimes it comes together like this and we're able to like tell people that are actually watching actual good information about people that you don't have to worry about on eBay or stuff like that. Cause he's one of those guys that I would agree with you is a, is a good thing for eBay. Um, he gives you a chance to buy stuff for cheap. You can get him slab, get him in a couple weeks, fast track, and you don't have to think about it and not worry. He's a good guy. And then, if you, you luck out, you luck out, and a couple weeks later that book's hot and you doubled your value or whatever. But he's I've never had a problem with that guy, and I think he's running a good business. Didn't yeah, Wizard absolutely. do that all that stuff back in the day? Didn't they start getting into like the guaranteed nine eights and or was it dynamic forces or I think it might be dynamic because they still do that. Cause I remember when Wizard magazine was out right at the end before they went under, they 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 started getting into that. And they had a bunch of controversy, supposedly, but I don't know what ever happened to all of that, whoever was doing it. So, real quick, I want to ask uh, issue something, because I'm not joking. Like, I got lost on Instagram, and I don't exactly knew, know what's going on over there with issues. Did something happen with your dog? or? Yeah, one of, one of my dogs, my oldest dog, I have uh, four dogs, and my oldest one, he's about 13 now. Um, he just hasn't been feeling well the last, like, week or so. And in the last two or three days, he, he kind of stopped eating, and he wasn't going to the bathroom, and he was kind of, like, crying when he walked. And so I took him to a, a really good animal hospital that's over here, and they, they like, basically, you know, doggy admitted him and said that uh, – you know, there's definitely something going on that, you know, his, his liver functions and all this stuff, they did blood work was like really bad. So um, they gave me that bad news and he's still there. So it's been two days and he's getting tests and he has sludge and like a liver and gallbladder infection. Um, so they're treating it with antibiotics and they think they're going to have to do surgery. So I found that news out and I sort of put it out right away that, you know, basically you know, we talked about this. I'm not, I'm not big on selling my books and I'm a pretty big hoarder, but my, my dogs, you know, are just as much my family as like my daughter is. So, you know, comic books can be replaced. So I just sort of reached out and told people that I had books available that basically make me an offer on anything you see on my page, any picture. There's not really too many books that are more important to me than, I mean, there's no book that's more important to me than my dog, but obviously I prefer to sell some of the lesser ones before I sell the uh, big ones. But, uh, the people responded. It was really awesome. Um, just in the last 24 hours, I've, I've sold about $2,000 worth of books Jesus. to help with this vet bill that's estimated between, to be anywhere between $2,000 and $8,000. So, you know, every little bit helps. And, um, and Can so, I yeah. Ask you a um, yeah. Have you ever thought about maybe, I mean, look, we have a lot of hours. I, 
we all people know who we are uh, you know i've got i'm closing in on 2000 subs and I've, some of these people in here bueller some other people in here have got a lot of subs what do you think about us like starting a i mean why don't you put together a gofundme so that you don't have to liquidate your comics and we can all contribute that way you can keep your books and we can help you pay for that stuff or something i mean I, I, it might not make you feel comfortable. You might feel like you have to give something and back to them for money, and I get that. But I myself have no problem donating to like a GoFundMe or something like that for your dog's surgery, so you don't have to liquidate your books. You know what, um, Bill, and I, and a lot of people had that same suggestion, and um, and I appreciate that. I appreciate people uh, offering. I, I appreciate people reaching out and asking me those questions. Um, and maybe, you know, people could say I'm, I'm too stubborn, but, um, you know, I, I didn't grow up with a lot and I, and I worked my, my butt off my whole life. And, um, you know, th these comic books are just paper and they're replaceable and, and I'm selling them not on eBay to strangers. I'm selling them to people within our community, people that are kind of already the comic family. So if people are reaching out and buying my books, you know, nobody's tried to take advantage of me. Nobody's really come at me with like crazy low ball offers to try to, you know, beat me when I'm down. So yeah, it sucks to let them go, but it, I know they're going to people that want them, you know, N no one's hustling me on a book so they could turn around and flip it. These are, you know, people, offering me money for books and, and, you know, it works both ways. I don't, I don't like getting something for nothing. And, um, you know, I'm just kind of against like the donation. And I, and I told people on some of my posts that have asked me that, you know, listen, if, if you do have extra money and you want to donate it somewhere, there's a lot of really good charitable donations out there. I can, I can tell people a million different donations that, that they could send their money to, to people that really, really need it because, you know, that's my thing. I'm, I'm going to handle my dog's vet bills regardless. And, and I'd rather, <clears throat> you know, work a part-time job or sell some of my books and handle it, you know, on my own the way that I'm, you know, supposed to than accept, uh, you know, other people's hard-earned money for, for nothing. So I tell people, if you want to buy a book, buy a book. That's how you can help me. If you want to buy a book, if you see something you like, if I still have it available, <clears throat> I'll sell you a book. At least I'm giving you something back for your money. You know, I, I don't I don't want people to just hand their money out and not not to me. You know, there, there's a lot of other people and animals out there who are not in the position I'm in. I have, you know, I have a job. I have a roof over my head. I have a ton of comic books that are just, you know, colored paper. Um, you know, it's not the end of the world, man. All, all these books that I've had to say goodbye to if I want to someday down the road, I, I can replace every single one of them. But I can't I can't replace my dog, you know. Yeah. But I do appreciate that. Everybody who has reached out, anybody who suggested that, anybody who's reached out to me on Instagram and said, hey, man, can I just have your PayPal? I'll throw you five bucks. I really appreciate it. Just the fact that thought alone for people to say that is enough for me. I don't uh, I don't want anyone to just give any of their money away. Not not to me. Not to me. Well, um, is, is this stuff, like I said, I, I can't believe I'm saying this because I'm always talking to you on text or Instagram or something weird. That I haven't seen anything yet. My, I, I go, I'll go back and look at your page. Do you, are you marking? You taking pictures of a bunch of stuff, and you're marking sold on individual things or what? No, you know what? Since I'm not a seller, I've, it's it's not really been the cleanest operation. People have just kind of scrolled through my whole feed and like DM'd me and said, "Hey, how about this book or how about that book?" And then last night I put together. A bo it might be gone by now. I, I don't know. I'll have to put another one together. I put, I put together a box of some stuff that I thought was sort of either hot or interesting books or, or decent titles. And uh, and I just made a video of it, me me pulling them out of the short box. And I put it. Oh, I did see that. I saw I saw one where you're pulling out X-Men. Yeah. And I basically was just like, you know, people can just DM me and, and, and put together a package and I'll tell you, you know, what kind of prices I was asking on stuff. And, and like I said, you know, I, I sold a pretty decent portion of stuff and, you know, some books weren't that important to me and other people wanted them. And, you know, so that's, that's the thing too, you know, not every book I have is a, you know, it may not be a huge key to me, but there's some books that people are really excited to ask me to buy that, um, you know, that, that maybe weren't that important to me. And then there's some that I had to, you know, sell and say goodbye to that, you know, I, I wasn't too too happy about but you know like I said I've acquired all these books over time and some of them somewhat recently they're they're not you know they're not more important than you know like real life so, well I'll, I'll definitely go back and, and look around see if there's anything I mean honestly I get what you're saying I mean 
I get what you're saying, dude. It's just sometimes people just want to donate, you know. I, for me, it's I, I I get it. You can replace your books, but at the same time, I can feel the pain. Uh, if I had to liquidate some stuff, I mean, I get it. If this what you're doing and why you're doing it, and I so, none of this means anything when it comes to a loved one or a loved pet or whatever. And I get it. Uh, well, I guess I'll just leave it at that. If you guys want to go check out his Instagram, uh, it's just I got issues, right? Or, it's uh, yeah, it, it's I underscore got underscore issues two three one nine is my is my Instagram handle. So I, I'll tell you guys right now, most of the big books on there are either already gone or on hold. So if you're asking me for like Hulk one eighty. Uh, Fantastic Four 49, Marvel Spotlight 5, Daredevil 2. Uh, those books are, are you know, those you are sold already. All those? What's that? You sold those books? I sold like uh, three of those, and then one of them's uh, on hold. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, so, you know. Books are on the wall behind you. Yeah, well, no, the wall's like kind of empty now. That's why I'm not using the wall as like my uh, my backdrop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, If you go look at my pictures, like 16 books off the wall are gone. Those are the first ones to go. Those are my big books, you know? So the price of your books command more attention and command more money. And so, you know, if I could sell one book for like 250 bucks, it, it, it beats the hell out of trying to cobble together, you know, 25 books to make that same amount of money. Um, but yeah. same thing, I told people, I have a lot of modern books. I buy a lot of books every week. Uh, I buy a lot of, you know, generally in the past, I buy a lot of new releases every week. So even if there's stuff that you don't see on my page, if there's kind of just books you're you're looking to fill holes, I'm not, I don't think I've asked for too much over what I paid on almost anything I sold. You know, I'm not looking to beat anybody up either. If these books are going to go to people, you know, I'd rather, you know, just, it's it's like putting the money I spent on them back in my pocket so that I can put it towards this, this, uh, this bill. I'm not much of an entrepreneur when it comes to, uh, you know, selling books. I feel, yeah, I have like that guilty feeling when I, if I try to make too much of a profit off something. <laughs> I think I saw something last night with Hulk sold an X Men ninety four. Was that for the dog? Yeah, he's a dick. He's he 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 has my PayPal and he. He's a dick. I, I thank you. I appreciate it, but he's a dick. I asked him not to do that, and he did it anyway, like an asshole. So, no, 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 no. So everybody knows. One, the night before his dog goes, you know, all takes him to the vet or finds out there's a problem. You know, I was like I said, because we text and DM whatever all the time. So I was telling him about you know my daughter's in Girl Scouts, so their troop is donating cookies to the troops and. You know, I'm a dad, so I'm trying to get her badge and stuff like that. And I pretty much tapped out my resources to order cookies. My wife was like, that's it, no more. So I needed I needed some more cookies to get her badge. And like like instantly he was like, bam, here's the money. You know, and and last month, I mean, like when I, you know, a couple whatever, January, when I was kind of down and out, you know, issues was the dude who took care of me. So hundred percent, you know. That's that's how it works. I get it. Well, you know, I'll be donating a third of my super chats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been hearing that for a while. Two there. issues, but Hulk, screw you. <laughs> I'm cool with that. I'm all right with that. I'll donate my three dollars and thirty three cents. No, man, I I I appreciated that a lot, and uh, I know that was something that wasn't necessary. Like I said, everyone who's just reached out, even just to say they hope that the dog's doing doing well. Uh, I appreciate that. I think that's really what it's all about. I don't. I don't like to uh, ask for more than that from people. I think the compassion and stuff that people show is is more than enough. And um, like I said, man, I'm a, I'm an able-bodied, uh, young-ish man, so I can sell some comic books and and maybe my my body in the streets and Ten and bucks. say, uh, and, hey, man, you you gotta do what you gotta do, bro. Ten bucks at a little overpriced, bro. It's a little overpriced though. <laughs> so. All right, well, well, we'll jump off that. Uh, I hope your dog's doing well. I'll see if I can. Well, whatever. I'll something's gonna happen. <laughs> but uh, 
is the mic on? Because I don't hear anything. I hear you. So, Bill, Bill, Bill talks so much that he gets uncomfortable when there's silence. He thinks. Yeah, but when there's broken. silence, there's a dead silence, dude. He's just so audio broken. When... <laughs> I don't know. I just don't trust my equipment or something. Uh, me, I wouldn't uh, trust your equipment either. <laughs> that's not what no, I'm not going. That's what she said. That's what she said. <clears throat> so me and uh, Hulk's been displaying behind him this little CGC book, uh, right behind his head. So I figure we might as well talk about the trade that we made really fast. So that little that spawn 228 or 227. Uh, I had I've been holding forever, and we we did a trade. You, so, showed everyone, you showed us. You showed everyone this last time we did. Comedy. Uh, okay, well, he's got to present it, so. God, Whatever. Stop, stop, showing, stop showing off your books, man. I wanted to show it. You know what? Whatever. Dude. <laughs> did you guys see those Lego things in last I'm, night? I'm just, I'm just bitter because you guys are showing off books, and I'm like, fucking. Did you? I'll send you a book. I don't want a book. I have plenty of books. I have more than enough books. You should awesome. see this room, dude. This room is disgusting. The amount of comic books I. You awesome. know what? The, you know what? You know what? Though yesterday made me realize, I'm a really big Spider-Man fan and a really big Fantastic Four fan, and so the bulk of my books that are probably worth money are my two favorite characters. So of course it sucks to like give them away. Did issues free, uh, freeze on your screen? Yeah, he disappeared. I want to lock on him just because it's so funny looking. Oh, okay. I think I... Wait. Well, his cinder block furniture probably fell over. Is he... Uh... <laughs> the little picture's funny, dude, because I click on it, but it won't do the big picture. But look at his little picture. Oh, man. man, he's got issues. Yeah, we got we lost issues. I think he's wrestling. Us. Whoa! Experiencing technical difficulties. <laughs> Wish I could stand by. Wish I had a little sign to pop up. Uh, anyway. I guess I guess we'll continue on without him. It's kind of hard. Why don't you ask say something? What's going on with you? What's going on with me? I'm just uh, doing the whole thing. Just posting up all the stuff on Instagram, all the summaries of all the whole issues, the key issues, the spec issues, the movie spec issues. The... Yeah, dude, you're like giving away secrets. I noticed that. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, I'm not. Yes, you are. Anything no. that has to do with Betty Ross is do, 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 everyone knows now, dude. Well, yeah, that's what everybody wants to hear about. They don't want to hear about some non-significant villain or <laughs> plot line. I mean, you know, that's, anyway. that's what everyone wants to hear about. So they want to see what the big deal is with the issues. So I post them up and explain a few things. And So you two have been more like, that's where you guys kind of started initially it was just doing instagram like non-stop right no i i mean no i mean i started just watching youtube at first just watching and then then i got on instagram um because i basically heard that was a good place to buy stuff and i was sick of feebay because i'm so tired of trying to fill in runs and buying an issue that costs a dollar 25 but i'm paying four dollars and fifty cents to ship it and so I heard Instagram was a much better way to go, and the prices were better, and plus all the eBay sellers were starting to suck. So that's how I got started. And then I was like, oh, I'll post some comics up, you know, talk about Hulk or whatever. And now, you know, here I am. So first, Infamous K9. No, I didn't get the uh, Arnold CGC. Um, and – John Wayne wants to know what the Captain America issue is behind you. Is it just like to like? Oh, that's the Mike Zek number three twenty one. Oh yeah, that's like one of the famous Mike Zek issues where Cap uses an Uzi when he's uh, fighting Flag Smasher. No, that's like one of my that I pretty much only buy like the Mike Zek Cap 
Captain America's in the early ones, so that's like one of my favorite ones. You like flag smashing? No. But no, <laughs> that's all. Uh, that is pretty sick. He comes out here every, Phoenix every year. I see him every year, him and Betty or Beatty or whatever you want to say. Yeah, uh, Zek only does like the – doesn't he only do like the, I, the cons that are very comic-centric, I guess is the word? Not the big pop culture ones anymore. From that's what I heard. Well, Phoenix is a big pop culture one now. It's they're they're trying to bring it back. Um, this year, a lot of people from the East Coast are coming, which has never really happened, and I'm really excited about it uh, to get some old name artists and writers down here, which is abnormal. But I think they're trying to save the con. I mean, it's really big, but it's all about cosplay and. Well, I mean, that's most cons are going that way. They're going Star. to pop culture and uh, cosplay and comics are taking a back seat. I mean, like I used to be a big San Diego Comic Con guy. Uh, I used to go every year, like religiously, as long as I wasn't deployed. And when I first started going, I mean, there were comic booths everywhere. And then the last year I went was um, like 2010. And you would walk whole aisles and not see a single comic book. And the aisles, yeah, they're, all like, they're not like a normal comic con. They, the aisles are like a quarter mile long and you won't see a single comic book. And, and now even all the big comic book distributors are pulled out because they can't even afford it anymore. Like mile high pulled out. And that's what she said. The only companies like torpedo are, are there. Yeah, you know what's funny is I, I've had a couple chances to go and I didn't just because I keep hearing horror stories. Like, you can barely walk in there now and everyone just goes there for exclusives. There aren't many, like, comic dealers. and I'm, I'm sure there are, but it's it's a totally different machine now. Oh, no, I mean, it's definitely not a place you go to buy comic books anymore. Yeah. Because, one, the prices are pretty high. The people who go there are not bringing dollar bins because they have to make, like I said, I don't know the cost of the booths, but everybody I've ever talked to said they're outrageous. I wouldn't doubt it. That'd be cool. But I mean, at the same time, man, I mean, if you're into any of this, any of that pop culture, I mean, that is, you got to go one time in your life just to walk around and just see the ridiculousness of everything. I mean, don't you go to like the furry conventions with the bronies? Oh my god. I heard that you were the furry issues. Yeah, you're the one wearing the furry panda mask, so Yeah, and that that's <laughs> retired. You know what you should do? You should auction that off for your dog. You know I, what's funny? You know what's funny? Comic Books NYC reached out to me today and he wanted to donate some money and I was like, "No, man." And he was like, "You're really going to make me go look at your books and like buy a book." And I was like, "Yeah, man, if you want to buy a book, buy a book. I'm not going to accept any money." And he was like, he was like, I'll give you a list of things I'm interested in. And he was like, Star Wars 42, Tales of Suspense 59, the Panda Head. The, uh, and he wanted he wanted to buy the Panda Head off me. I declined. Now, you know, he's the type of guy that can – no money. Money's not an option. You know that, right? Well, I don't think that that's relative to anyone. I think money is money. is money, And I don't care if you have a million dollars in the bank or $20 in the bank. I, I don't, I don't want to just take your money. You know, I know, but that's a famous mask, dude. It's not that famous. I mean, plenty of other like, people. It made like of other people bought them at Walmart besides me. It made like what two appearances? <laughs> it made it made like five appearances. <laughs> well, it's gone now, dude. It's not. It's in my. It's in my daughter's room. Oh uh, no! I no. She, she runs. runs she runs. She runs around the house with it on her head. She thinks it's hilarious. You took the hat off and noticed that no one screamed, and you're like, oh, thank God, and you haven't worn it since. I just got comfortable a little bit more of being on camera, to be honest. I, I wore that thing. I wore that because I was like a little, you know, I don't know, whatever. A little good. I was like a fucking. <laughs> What'd you say? What'd you say? I was like, go ahead, finish that sentence. You you said you, you wore it because you're a little bit or something. What you're going to say. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> He's like, it's just too hard to drink when I'm wearing that freaking mask. 
I have to drink through like the eye or I have to That's like what I'm saying. Stomach. It's a lot easier to just like drink it. with no mask on. I was like, listen, if fucking if, if, fat, if fat Andy Garcia could do a show without a mask on, I knew it was coming. I? I knew it was coming. It was. <laughs> listen, uh, when we got when we got cut off, you were asking about that show last night, which by the way I thought was awesome, and I thought those figures were were ridiculously cool. Right. Yeah. That's why I did it. I I I'm trying to think of stuff to show people that I love. That are like seriously, if you. It, let's say you you know I have the whole point of one. Now I put my little dude next to it. My little you can't really see it, but um, you can buy like a classic cover with your little Lego dude in there, fifteen bucks, put it somewhere, and you save yourself a bunch of money. <laughs> you know I think they're cooler than pops, that's for sure. But I love pops. I'm not a pops guy. <laughs> there goes the issues. He's gonna play now. It says one thing. And then he goes and camps in a corner on his video game. <laughs> Shut up. Shut <laughs> I've been thinking about getting back in the game because I, I used to have a YouTube channel before this and it was only gaming. And uh, it didn't go anywhere. But I used to play a lot of Call of Duty. I've been thinking about maybe one once a week or once a month. Well, you have to be good at the game for, for people to watch you. Or, well, thing, or, or you have to have some boobies or something to show off. On yeah. Your, so, well, I mean, female boobies. You know what's weird is that uh, last night I got like a notification that there was like a show on and I jumped in and Legend and these guys were like playing like WWE. Yeah, I was in there too. I was so I was so confused because I thought I was jumping into like a comic book show and I was just like, am I in the right, am I in the right place? I'm not sure if they do it once a month or once a week or do it after. I think they do it after a WWE show or something. Yeah, they, they, were talking, they were talking about like upcoming matches and and stuff like that for for belts and I don't I don't know I don't I don't follow wrestling a lot but it, for the little while that I was in there it was actually pretty pretty interesting. It's pretty funny. They're pretty big WWE guys and they do that every once in a while and it's funny. <laughs> Thanks, Bueller. Uh, but uh, yeah, <laughs> there's a pretty big group of them that like that stuff. I don't. I don't game as much as I used to. I just, uh, you know, I work and I work late. So when it, you know, when you, when I get home at like you know midnight from work, sometimes I just want to like decompress a little bit. So when I'm not, when there's nothing on YouTube or something like that, that's why I messaged you earlier. Like there's nothing on YouTube because I was thinking to myself, well, what the hell am I gonna do when I get home? <laughs> well, that's all. Like, well, let's go live. I picked up some books. So, <laughs> you know, um, it's funny though that you say that because like. I used to game nonstop when I got home. And then now, and I started, fell out of it. I started getting into the comics. I mean, I've been into comics for 10 years, but like I really started going into it. And I made that my thing for a couple of years. And then uh, once the channel started, I don't have time for anything. So like I can go hunting here and there, but there's no more gaming. I mean, I have a PlayStation 4. I've got the new Call of Duty. I've got games. I don't play it. I don't even watch TV barely. Did you play – I don't watch any TV. Did you play the Spider-Man game? No, yeah. but I thought it looked pretty cool. Spider-Man game is pretty badass. I, I, I wish I had – what are you playing now? Me? Yeah, Hope looks like he's playing a video game too. No, I'm not doing anything. I'm, well, no, because my screen is like locked up on your little picture, so it's throwing me off, and I have to look down at my phone because – I don't know what's going when, on. So whatever you your talk, screen, just select whoever you have. No, it, it's locked up. There's no, there's not, I can't see either one of you. I just see economics and comics written across the screen. And then your little, uh, whatever the inhumans babies. What about this? Now what? It's baby black bolt. Okay. Is yeah. He's a baby no matter what, but you see you yourself now. I can see me, but I can't see either one of you. Unless I'm looking at my phone, then I can see you for some reason. I have no idea why. That's Ever weird. since I, uh, issues blanked out and did whatever he did, it did something. Maybe go Dude, to I, I don't know what happened. My my phone froze, and I could hear you guys talking, but I couldn't get it to turn off. I had to like throw hope, it at the wall. Go up to the little settings thing on the top and just click on it, and then like maybe re reselect your camera or something, and then save it. Might boost you back in uh so bueller says they do it every pay after every pay-per-view that's what she said 
And he also said that's what she said. Damn. Did it work? Yeah, I got you. I still can't see issues, though. That's all right. It was just throwing me off looking at a blank screen, but my phone was showing you guys, so I kept looking down at my phone. What do you do? Use the phone to read the chat? Yeah, I use the phone for the chat, and I just have my, if I'm, like, when you invite me on, I just use my iPad, so that way I don't have to use headphones. But if I'm hosting it, like, when me and Issues have a show, I got to use my little tablet and then wear headphones. And then I'll use my iPad to see the chat. I'm not all fancy with the computer and all that stuff. All that internet tomfoolery. <laughs> you know what he should do? You should use your TV issues and, and uh, you know, brought, put YouTube on there and you can see us in the background. That's corny. I have, look, I have this cool video where, like, different Avengers characters are popping up behind me. I think it's cool that it, she was, her tail was moving. So, see, like, She-Hulk. Look at that. So we're talking about comics, and there's cool comic stuff back there. Instead of being a narcissist and putting myself on the TV. Whatever, dude. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, God, what a killjoy. <laughs> so fun it, goes to die. <laughs> Is that thing just show every first appearance from 63 on? Is I'm that what it's doing? I'm the fun sponge. What's that? Is that thing showing every first appearance from 63 sponge. on, one after another? Yeah, it's showing every single member of the Avengers ever. Oh, that's what it, okay. It's like Is a 10 minute video from IGN. There's one for like the X Men and Justice League, too. I just think they're cool videos. So they just sort of whatever. Everyone's saying they can't see you at all. Me? Yeah, well, that's what Need More Comics uh, right now. Yeah, hot spread. The new hot. Don't say Grim Knight. So, one, so what's. So coming comic book day, what's one key or hot spec, but not Grim Knight? Who, me? Yeah, that's what they're asking. Um, oh, yeah, Bill, I only see you two on here. Well, now I see Hulk. Hang on one sec. It's probably mine from getting disconnected. Yeah, you screwed up everything. Dude, it wasn't my fault, man. I don't know what happened. This is why you should stick to the graphic design department. Watch, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave and then come back. Oh man, we are never getting you back now. He's gone forever. What he re he's? Do I need to reinvite him or no? No, he said he's gonna drop out and either and come back. So you might need to reinvite him. I think that all the keys are on everyone's radar. There's that one book, um, Blood Red or something like that. Red something. It's like a vampire cover. I don't know if that's this week or next week. Uh, but I, you know what I kind of think? I think that this book called um, – There you go. There's a book called Life, Death of Toyo, Toyo Harada. Can you see – can anyone see me now? Or is, yeah, we can see you now. All right, cool. Gene Man. Yeah, that's a cool uh, – that's a uh, Valiant book, right, Bill? Yeah, there's like six variants, and it's not really about the variants, but I feel like it might be a kind of a low print. Well, there is a lot of covers. They're doing one of those glass covers for that again, too. That one or the – oh, yeah. So that might be something hot. Um, and then the other stuff, there's a bunch of – so basically in, in 45 minutes, my keys of the week video is coming on. So I basically, I take a golf cart. <laughs> I drive on a golf cart and do it on a golf course. So that's coming up in 45 minutes. If you want to watch that, I just give you all the keys. But – I think that Toyo Verado or whatever it is, and there's dude, I there's something about Avengers No Road Home number five. I can't really pinpoint it yet, but I feel like all this Red She Hulk stuff and the Mortal Hulk and all that, and that's where we kind of got. Laid so, off. so basically, though, you think Betty's going to be a Red She Hulk and she's not going the harpy route? Well, no, whatever it is, it. Avengers No Run Home, number five, Hulk is going back. He's going to be in that on Wednesday. So, you know, uh, there's something key about that. I don't know yet. I don't, I can't, I'm specking. I don't know. Uh, but um, I'll, I'll tell you what, 
the worst cover of the week is going to be Superman 9, the Liefeld variant. Uh, so I was planning on, I don't know if I, I guess I could ask you guys in the chat. I was planning on buying it and ripping the cover off on camera and then reading the book. <laughs> because I can't, it's so frustrating. It is might be his worst work. Well, I don't know. That's it's, no, it's pretty it's, bad. It's really bad. And I mean, it's in their straightforward poses. I mean, his the worst characters are just standing there and they look horrible. It looks like someone understood what abs are supposed to look like and never drew them before or something. It just doesn't look right. Everything about it's horrible. There's a couple other cool books coming out this week. I mean, I have a. I, I'm not going to tell you my whole video that's coming in 30 minutes. Well, I personally, I like, uh, and I don't know if any of these show up on your list, so I guess people could watch you after. But uh, there's a variant for Shredder in Hell number two by uh, Matteo Scalera. It's a cool little uh, one for ten variant. Um, that's that looks like. It, not only is that a cool cover, but I, if anyone read issue one, I, I really liked it. I thought it was a cool little story. Oh, so I'm a, question. I'm a turtles fan though. So that turtles one, the Scalera variant, wasn't that last week with the four turtles on it and they're all ghostly? Or is that the one you're talking about today? That's what I'm talking about for Wednesday. It's this okay, week. So, yeah. For me, like that, if I had, I think in my hot covers video, I talked about it. Probably one of my favorite covers. Yeah. I, I mean, it's not a key. Mm -mm. But it's one of those covers that it'd be kind of hard to get. And if you can get it, probably buy it because it's sick, dude. I love it. Yeah. I know for sales figures and stuff, like for the issue number one of Shredder and Hell had a one for ten by uh, Raphael Albuquerque, and that yeah. one that one was selling for like double ratio because, like we said before, you know who who orders ten copies of this? Only kind of like bigger stores, you know, a small sh shop that has no one who reads Turtles is not going to order ten copies of this book. So, yeah, I would say. That is going to be super hot. Uh, There's a cool uh, image number ones this week, too. Uh, th that book, Little Bird, looks like it could be uh, interesting. Yeah, I, I can tell you. I mean, there's, so you got Little Bird. You got <laughs> Wicked Righteous 2, number one. I'm going to tell you. That number, assassination? That, that's out this week, right? I think it's the, yeah, it's Assassination, number one. Yeah, it's like two oh, words. It's also Calamity Kate, number one. Um, and the second cover for that, Sick. She's like rolling in like a Cadillac. It's got like a Wizard Beach feel or some shit. I don't know. Um, some of the stuff I'm not going to tell you because it's kind of stupid. Um, I don't know. There's something about that Shuri number six cover, Fire, and it's a. It's a. I think she has a new costume in it. That'll be a hot cover. X twenty three is the origin of X Assassin. I don't know, but like to me, what's really Art of, Germ has like three covers this week, I think, right? Yeah, uh, that's a, but the I would think the sickest cover probably besides the Blood Red or whatever, whatever that book is, I can't remember. But that's you have to get on eBay. There's like either a hundred or hundred and fifty per one. So sick. Uh, or the um, the one we is that the va is that the vampire one you're talking about? Yes, the aftershock book. Shannon Laird or something. Shannon something variant. Mared. Mared. Those sold yeah. out already. Like those sold out in like even? 20 minutes. Uh, they probably do, but the amount of money you're going to pay for it is probably ridiculous. That's my point. It's dark red, I think. But yeah. Size nine. But that book, I think, will be fire. Like super expensive because it's so limited. And that Scalera, I think, is going to be super, super hot. I agree 100% with you in regard to covers. Now, in regard to keys, I don't know. Bat, that Grim Damn. Knight, number one, that's the origin of the Grim Knight. And I think it's a one shot. That's going to, those covers. You mean this one? Yep. There, we want me to lock on you? Hang on, do it again. Oh, yeah, that's it. There's two covers for that. The version, that's super sick. But uh, honestly, um, I think for key, the stuff I'm really going to go after. Is I'm like they're gonna mass produce the Grim Knight number one, and it's only a one shot. But dude, that Del Auto cover is sick. It's super sick. Um, plus, it's an origin. 
And there's something about uh, that Avengers. I, I just, I, I don't know. I know Hulk returns, but I think with all the drama happening in Mortal Hulk and all this other shit, I, here's my theory, okay? I think they're going to drop the first appearance of the Immortal Red She-Hulk in a different book. That's what I think. I think it'll be in Avengers. Now that I know he's coming back to the Avengers No Run Home or whatever, if they're in the same timeline or whatever, if they're, they are, right? No. Yeah. I think there's a slight, because they can't be going concurrently. Well, actually, if you think about it, Avengers 684 was all that crap. So he left. He became more Hulk. He did his own run. Now he's coming back. So I think it is. Regardless, I feel like they're not going to put it in Immortal Hulk. Immortal Hulk's been dropping too many, and I could most likely I'm wrong, okay? But Immortal Hulk's been dropping too much sick shit. <laughs> it just has. So it'd be tricky of them, and they do it all the time, to drop the first full appearance in another book. I don't think it's going to be this Avengers No Run Home number five, but I think there might be a key in there related to all this stuff. I don't think so. I think I think if Red She Hulk or whatever how they're going to do Betty, it's going to drop an Immortal Hulk. Uh, and most likely you're right. But I, wanna... I mean, there hasn't been that many, but there hasn't been that much stuff. I mean, to be honest, I mean, yes, Immortal Hulk is hot. It's definitely the flavor of the week right now, and everybody's going crazy. But there hasn't been anything major. Doctor Fry is not major, contrary to what the issue is going for. That's why one below that. all was. I mean, I I, just, I think they have to almost put Red She-Hulk if that's how the route they're going to go with them, with her. Well, the previews are definitely implying that she will be in the next, maybe the next one or the one after. The way they it's like hard to say because they got all those, the, the big, what, 16 has a couple big covers coming out for it. So it's hard <laughs> to say which one's going to have the big event. That's another thing. I was looking ahead, I think. And in the other Avengers book, there is a book with six variants. And it just doesn't make sense because they've been doing Putri and Noto or Putri and somebody the whole time. And yeah, oh, let me tell you something first of all. Dude, the Yadman Putri variants coming out soon with Conan, all the Conan covers that are coming out soon are so fucking sick, dude. They're in their regular covers. They're incredible. Wait till you see them. I, they're, they're incredible, dude. Some of the best cut. I can't remember the other one, what other cover it was, but it could be the Putri one. No, this one, Avengers No Road Home Number 5, has a Hulk on it. So, And it's Yasmin Putri. So that, even though it's a round cover, that's still pretty damn cool. I wish she wasn't doing uh, <laughs> regular covers because it's taken away from the heat of her cover art lately. I mean, they do that to all the artists, though. They kind of, like, once they spike a little bit, they put them on, like, regular stuff. You know, they did the same thing. I, I always say all the time, I'm a big Zafino fan, who's and, and a lot of people weren't familiar with him. And, you know, he had the people are, you know, his that Hulk number two that he did, the incentive is gaining steam, and that Dead Man Logan incentive he did recently it is, like... You're talking he, about Zafino, uh, right? Yeah, and uh, and then now they made him like the regular cover artist for that Ghost Rider destroys the Marvel Universe thing, and they're cool covers, but it just yeah, like when it's five covers in a row that they're doing just the regular, it kind of becomes like stale, right? It kills them. It kills their heat. Like like exactly what you're saying. Like one in twenty fives or Yasmin Pucci does this random cover somewhere or whoever, you know. Uh, not Inyuk Lee, but the guy that did the Ghost Spider one. It's not Inyuk, it's the other Lee. Uh, I can't remember how you say his oh, name. Oh, like G, G. Hung Lee? Yeah, that's him. He's the one. Yeah. So these guys, he's still hot right now. If he does something, it'll be hot, you know? But well, Yeah, they did. he did that cover for um, that Harley Quinn cover for Detective 1000 that's like selling bonkers. Dude, I bought right that now. one. I pre-ordered that on eBay for cheap. That was the, It was the Golden Apple exclusive, that, that one. Dude, I love that cover, dude. And it almost looks like the other one. The background is the same. That rainy city background. It, yeah. it almost looks like the same exact background of the photo. And that Del Otto Batman Grim Knight almost has that same feel, too. 
because there's a blue. But I know what you're saying with the rain. Um, I just I'm I'm looking forward to going to the comic shop and grabbing the Avengers No Run Home and flipping through it real fast to see if there's something super incredible in there. If not, then you know that was my spec. But I, I'm looking forward to because uh, they asked the uh, Grim Knight. He said, "Don't say Grim Knight." Who said? That that's what they asked. They said, "Name one like the book that's going to be hot or a spec book, but not the Grim Knight." Well, I said, "Life and Death of Toyo Harada." It could be a complete failure, but I have a feeling. I'm uh, dude. Miko Tsunyan's doing a cover. David Max doing a cover. The the Braithwaite cover sick. The Cafu's dude. There's some sick ass covers for that. I feel like they're coming out strong on that book, and they've been trying to. I don't know. I I just think that might be a good book, uh, but I don't think it's a huge week for keys. I mean, there are there's first full appearances of different things, and in, in Justice League Dark and stuff like that, but nothing to me that would really shout, "Oh my God, go buy it." But you know, until Wednesday, we're going to find out. <laughs> Well, I'll tell. I'll, I'll find out tomorrow morning. Are you going? Are you, they let you flip through the books at the shop? Well, I go. I go help bag and board and stuff. So I will not. I will not be visiting the shop this week. So you can just live vicariously through us. Absolutely, that's what YouTube and Instagram's for, man. So I can see all the cool stuff other people got that didn't cost me any money. We got... <laughs> Sunshine. I think Sunshine's saying that. Uh... There's a lot of people in here right now. It's pretty cool. Or at least a lot of, you know, from different places. Uh, one time, I think he's talking about Immortal Hulk being the best run of the decade. I think that's what he's saying. Uh, I don't not, know about that. but I personally like, and don't get me wrong, I like it. Uh, I personally like a lot of the new independent stuff, like Bone Parish and Hardcore and Prodigy. But uh, what I'm really... saying for Marvel. Yeah, I know. Uh, but... But uh, that I love the uh, Batman Who Laughs run. I think it's dope. I don't know. You like that one? I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's. I'm more excited for the Grim Knight. But you know what? I'm a Punisher fan a lot. The Grim Knight so... It's just a one shot. I know that. But here's the thing: Batman Who Laughs was in Dark Knight's Metal, and then it ended, and then they announced they were going to do you know, a mini series with him. And then he started popping up in justice league. And then now they did the five issue mini series, but they already announced he's going to have his own, own ongoing series. So can we really say 100% that the grim Knight won't be appearing more? It's oh, going to no. no. pop up for sure. I agree with you, dude. Like, honestly, if the grim Knight is, a, it, they have to make it like a full run because he, to me is the most appealing character ever. That Punisher version of Batman, that Batman who's badass but okay with killing people. How do you not make that into at least, dude, at least do like a 10 issue limited or something? Like something, something. Now, I think that that one out of everything will have the hugest, if they do it, that's going to last forever. That'll be one of the biggest. So I, I guess if we're going to spec, you need to buy as many Batman who laughs number ones as possible now. Because well, like you, well, like you said too. If you're one of those like true first speckers, you need to buy those books from. You need to buy those books from like two months before. It was like Harley number fifty or something like that, or fifty one, or I don't. Yeah, know. Yeah, it was Justice, or was it Justice League, or was it Batman? You know, and you know what's funny is I said that I got a lot of heat for that book. That I I know I just pointed out that one about the preview inside, but I'm like, look, dude, it's a preview. It's going to be sick. Buy it, and I bet you they're not super high. Pr well, maybe they are. Which uh, one? The the Harley one? Well, there's like three books: Harley, maybe Justice League, and uh, was it? I think it was Justice League. I mean, Justice League is is one of their bigger print run books. I mean, but, definitely a big print. I'm just saying for completionists. Like, I don't think, I think normal people are collectors are going to prefer to have Batman Who Laughs number one and consider that book to be the first appear a full appearance well, but. that's what they say because it, it it's again it's like that spider-man and that 2099 yeah. uh, thing it's the same thing but the thing is this about that justice league book because i read it it is justice league almost 100 there's a preview at the end but the internal story is about joker trying to stop um 
Lex Luthor from letting the Batman who lefts out. Right. Yeah. So that's key too. So in its own way. So who knows? I think both those books. I mean, as the way that's going, they're saying Batman who lasts number one is the first full of Grim Knight. That's fine with me. I've but been he trying. He doesn't up. say that. I I have that I have that book slabbed, and it doesn't say anything about a first appearance. Yeah, I just looked. CGC doesn't have anything written on the first Batman who laughs. Well, no, no, the the Grim Knight. That's what right. I'm but on, says, I have I have Batman who laughs number one slabbed, and there's no notes indicating that there's any first appearance of anybody in there. The problem with that is, as much as I agree with you, sometimes these uh. They don't put it on. They don't know. Sometimes they're just slabbing and sending out. I have so many CGC books that don't say, like, the first appearance of Caliban on it or stuff like that. Well, that's, it, a, that's a whole other issue then for a whole other show. But Is it bedtime? No, no, no. I just mean that's probably too long a thing to talk. I'm not, I'm not talking about No, no. About I, I'm not trying to open up that whole thing. Right. That, that's all I meant because we could talk about that for two hours that, you know, you have all these okay, books. So they, we have two books then. Then let's just agree on something. Then, there's if, the you, if you're gonna if you're gonna spec on the Grim Knight, then technically you have four books that you would want to grab. The you would want to grab previews. You, three three different books had the previews, and I, like I said, I, I'll find out the exact numbers. But, I uh, know it's Justice League because I bought it, and, and I'm not I'm like ninety percent sure one of them was Harley, and I don't know what the third one was, but I'm, I'm pretty sure Stone because I know it was like a random one that no one buys, and maybe. Just maybe that rent, like Curse of Brimstone. I don't buy that. I don't think these people. I don't know, but I think it was one. I think of I bought issue like one, two, and three for that book, and I was like, no, dude, this is not for me. I only bought the foil because there was a shitload of errors, so I bought a bunch of those because they're an error book, the foil one. So, uh, but I think it's one of those other books that's not super popular. So I would think if you're gonna spec hard on that, you buy the one that's the lower print that no one bought. Well, that would that if you're saying it's Curse of Brimstone, that would be the lowest print one out of the bunch. That's what I'm if, saying. If you're if you're going to compare it to, but also like you said though, the Justice League book is also relevant to the story, so that one's kind of got a double, a double hit there. I, I truly believe that the Grim Knight, if they do it, will be one of the baddest ass characters ever, because I, I, mean, I like him better much than what everybody wanted. A bat, like you said before, it's a Batman who you know is going to. Have no problem killing people. Everybody's wanted that. At, at yeah, some for point. like for for like thirty years, everybody's wanted that. Yeah, you have to do it. Right. I, I forget. I forget what book it was, but I mean, I mean, everyone's had that argument at some point, and it's been brought up in some of the Batman books that, like, you know, Batman's this supposed to be this super altruistic guy that is like out there saying, "Well, I'm not going to take a life because then I'm no better than them." But like, for every time that he hasn't killed Joker, how many innocent people have died? Yeah, he has a reason a million people die. Yeah, I mean... So, like, it really, like, you don't want to have a bad guy's blood directly on your hands, so therefore you indirectly yeah, have tons of innocent people's blood on your hands. I mean, it seems kind of like... I don't know. If you look at it from that angle, you have to be like, Batman is a fucking asshole. <laughs> it reminds me of a joke. But <laughs> well, let's just say this, okay? Let's just spec this way, okay? If we're we're all predicting that Grim Knight is going to be one of the best characters ever, and they're going to they're going to have a run, it's never going to end. It's going to be like Spawn or something like that. Thank I you. Wish. Let's just say uh, thank you, Biller, so much. Uh, I got to split that with these guys. Two dollars super chat. <laughs> so uh, you better spec. Okay, it's going to be one of those things. So in regards to that, my key of the week then is the Grim Knight. Number one, because it is his origin story. Right, right? exactly. Be key. So, in the long run, if we're talking long term uh, for this entire week, this is the book for that. And there's going to be a crap load of them. So, then we can spec which is the best one the A, the B, or the C cover. And I will say this the B, the C, because which, which cover <laughs> is the lowest print? Sketch covers are the lowest print. I know it sounds stupid. I don't. I don't. I don't. Uh, I'm not a big. I don't think I own any sketch covers. Yeah. I don't get it. But I'm just telling you, print wise, I'm probably buy one, and I'll probably buy a shitload of A and B. So, 
but in the long run, sketch covers, it's kind of weird. Uh, that's a whole nother game that isn't, I don't want to play. But so, yeah, there's my, I, they said besides Grim Knight, sorry, guys. Grim Knight's the killer. I mean, the, it's also unfair because to me, I think that this is kind of like a, a, a slow week. It is. Yeah. So, you know, the combination of those two things, it's not like there's a tremendous amount of competition. Don't get me wrong. I, I like, I like a lot of image books and stuff, but I just don't think there's anything that uh, is, you know, crazy good coming out this week that, that should be like drawing people's attention. No, I mean, the way this market works now, it's all about print and like albatross or like scat. Just, it's just how it is now the game for the lowest print book without any real content. And that's just the up and down roller coaster for a week or two. And then it goes back to the, the book that people missed. Although I think uh, is uh, Goon is out this week, right? That's correct. There's going to be two covers. Yeah, it's there's a, a there's a Nolan and a and a Powell, right? That's correct. The Powell's the A and the B's the Nolan, and it's the 20th anniversary. Of so the I mean, as far as independent stuff goes, I know a lot of stores don't even order a lot of Albatross books. I think uh, I, I well, think Goon, I think Goon could be a good book, and I, and I know it has a lot of fans out there. I'm not a huge Goon fan, but if, if I was in the store and I saw it on the shelf, I, I would pick it up. Yeah, I would definitely pick it up too. I have a feeling, though, there'll be more than we think. It is a popular, I mean, everyone, a lot of people, I think a lot of people know of the goon. Um, at least comic guys know what the goon is, or at least seen it, you know? Um, I don't know. And, of course, again, that uh, Toyo Yaka, whatever. <laughs> yeah, there is a new, yeah, Sunshine, there is a new Kamala Khan series, Kamala Khan. It's like the magnificent Miss Marvel. I don't know. I think... Uh... You should probably, like if, good you buy, if, you buy, if you buy one of those and you take it home, I want you to like look yourself in the mirror, punch yourself in the face, and 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 really and really think about all the poor choices that you've made in your life. Yeah, I, uh, I, supposedly there's a key in there, some sort of secret something. I don't yeah, know. You know what? Is to wipe your ass with it and throw it away. You have to make it yeah, though, so people buy it. Right. Yeah, that's what they're gonna do. That's they'll do die that. out after four issues and they'll reboot it so they have another number one to pump up sales. It'll go to issue seven or eight, cancel it, reboot it. Garbage. You know what? People talk about speculation fatigue. People talk about variant fatigue. People talk about all these different things that go on in, in the comic world. I really think the biggest thing I've noticed that I'm fatigued with is that every week is like 10 new first appearances. And, and, and in the last year of all the first appearances of the 200 freaking first appearances, how many of them have actually panned out to like turn into anything better than a one, one or two issue character? It's, well, it's like, exhausting. Everyone last week with the, I didn't pick it up. I didn't pick up Meet the Scrolls, but people are like, oh, it's a first appearance of this Scroll family. Who cares? Is one of them going to become somebody huge? Are we? Is everyone going to just pick up every book? Every, that's how I feel when I see these lists of first appearances or you should buy these books. Um, I'm not knocking any of you guys for the list you put together because I put together my own list too. But I just mean for a consumer, are you supposed to go out and buy every book that comes out every week just so you don't possibly miss a someday future maybe key? No, let me let me let me just let me because let me address it in my own, my way just cuz i mean yeah that's i do what you're saying now i'm not telling people to i mean this is part of my challenge this is people why the why they want the spec they don't want to do the research or they just want to get my idea on a cover or whatever so i'm providing those videos you know but i'm not telling people i mean sometimes i say look go buy that book cuz i just know it's going to be fire hot you know what i mean but i'm not directing people to buy every key that i tell them to or every cover I'm just kind of specking on my own thing. But I, I totally agree with what you're saying. And and I don't want people to think that that's what my channel is all about. Is, uh, sometimes I, you know, I, I think to myself, am I creating the problem? You know what no, I mean? No, I don't, I don't mean it like that. I don't think you're creating a problem by sharing that information. I just think I, I blame it on the publishers because they're using that as a means 
to drive sales because yeah. they know they know us as consumers, as comic book fans, that the two biggest things that we will go and mindlessly pay for right now are super dope covers and something that's like a first appearance. We fall or for number that. one. Yeah, we, we fall for those things hook, line, and sinker every time, myself included. And that's why I'm saying it's not your fault. As a channel that's sharing information, it's your responsibility to tell people who are watching you what where a first appearance is going to be. I don't bl- – like that's what I'm saying. I don't blame anyone who makes a list or who makes this content. I don't blame any of you, and I don't blame myself when I make it because you're just sharing information. I just think these publishers, they're just – they're using every trick in the book to just get people to fork over money on books that don't have a lot of substance and don't have longevity. Yeah. I think that that's like a whole nother show as well. Like we could talk about that for hours because it's very frustrating to be honest with you. And yeah, but that's not going to change. It it's won't change. Gonna keep buying them. That's how they're selling stuff. books. So what we would say, I think as a group would say to whoever's in the chat or whoever watches us on the rerun, we went, you know, use the information that everyone gives you and pick maybe one that you think might pan out. Like I did a video recently, like top five uh, keys book or something like that. And there was like um, Red Goblin, even though it wasn't super big, uh, Mortal Hulk. I can't remember. It's t- <laughs> uh, It blocked my mind, but I threw up the, the like five big ones, like, the, like Batman Damn, the first dick. Even though it's not a big deal, it is kind of, and and things like that. So as you're saying, like last year, I think maybe there was three to five majors that will pan out, and then of course, Teen Titans twelve was, uh, I think that was the year before, because we all know that the bat who laughs is sick. <laughs> I saw I I saw I sold my first appearance of that yesterday. Oh, oh that's for shit! Yeah. Damn it! That's how off I've been, man. So, which, which was, that was one of the, that was one of the ones that was sort of sad to let go, even though it's a modern book. That's a, it's a cool the regular, book. it's the regular. Yeah. I still have, I mean, I have a foil one and I have the second uh, print. So I, it's not like I'm completely empty handed, but I, I only had one copy of the first print and that one, uh, that one is going to be in a new home soon. But, um, what do you want for the uh, foil? <laughs> I'm, <ready. laughs> no, I'm not going to do that to you. Um, well, are you, you going to text them right after this is done? He, he definitely uh, is. He definitely is. Uh, one million yen. One million. How much is that? Like five dollars? Yeah, I don't know. But three hundred thousand uh, pesos, please, sir. So yeah, um, I mean, I don't really think the goon is a key. It's more of just like a low print. No, yeah, I mean, you you know, I don't read the, uh, I'll tell you this, for, for people that follow me and I put together kind of that video stuff that's coming out and I put out my top 10, um, the my top 10 that I put out is a combination of either just covers I really, really like and books that I actually read that I'm looking forward to. So I don't, I'm, I'm not the kind of guy, I don't have the knowledge or put in the work like you do, Bill, where I can say what books I really think are going to be really great spec books every week, but I just kind of, you know, everyone says, buy what you like, buy what you like. When I put up my top 10, normally chances are I'm going to buy all 10 of those books. That's, that's just how I am. Those are like the books that I'm really looking forward to for the week. You know, they're all stories I read and that I follow up on and that I just think are, you know, just like cool or going to be cool. Yeah. I have, I have the, I have a buying problem. I'm trying to like create this thing where every Wednesday I like sell little three packs. And yeah, like, I saw the one that you did for that last week. I think that that's good too because it seems like your shop gets a lot of like good variety. Well, no, it's I not. That is three pack. Well, four pack technically. Yeah, he Hope won one. Yeah, he didn't uh, win the grand prize, but he won the extra variant. I threw. Yeah, in the I won the the Harley variant. Yeah, I I threw in a couple of those. There was like nine people that bought the three pack and then one person won the poop emoji and then two people won the Harley variant. It just as an addition. Um, but I have to say, dude, this cover is pretty badass. I mean, I know it didn't catch on. Like it's not on fire or nothing like that, but dude, they're hard to find now. It's hard to find, but like on eBay, they're not going for very much and on Instagram, yeah. but it that's an awesome cover and I'm not really into variants. 
I think it was a decent week last week for that three pack, to be honest with you. Because you got the Deadpool, the, yeah, the first the dead, the good dead night. Dead. And that work is commanding a little bit more. What was the other one? The Mortal Hole. Well, you threw in the Mortal Hole, but that's just because that's pretty oh. sick. Cover. Well, that's the that's where she opens her eyes. She gets shot in the head, dude, and opens her eyes, and it's red. Spoiler alert. That's a cameo of the red She-Hulk, the mortal, she-dead, Betty Ross, uh, Gamma Ray chick. Uh, spoiler, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. So that was actually a decent three-pack. But what I had to do, uh, issues, was I went to, like, six different comic shops to build three-packs. Like, it was hard, dude. People out here... There's lines, and it's so weird because I was getting phone calls from people saying, there's people in line saying sick. I'm like, what? Because <laughs> they, they know because I'm from the area. So they're like, you know, oh, I'm picking up that one he said, and da-da-da. So they go buy all the shit I say, and then I go into the store, and it's all gone. Well, that's your fault. Well, yeah, yeah I to say, you kind of maybe you should. I screw myself. That's what she said. Oh, wait. But, yeah, so I was thinking about doing that again. I found some um, – I'm not. I'm only gonna do like five boxes though. I'll try to find those six covers that we're talking about. Maybe some Grim Knights or something. And then I was gonna throw in some like better books and give better odds, like two out of five. Like I'll throw two prizes in at five packs, and that's it. Well, you did three out of eight. That's pretty. Or not? Was it eight well, or nine? It was one out of nine, and then when that person won, it was two out of eight. Well, no, but I'm saying three out of nine won something. Yeah, that I mean that that's pretty awesome, and I mean I can deal with those odds. Yeah, you won. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, real. Yeah, I would. Give my super chat cut. <laughs> I'll give you a cut, dude. Uh, but I figure if I do one out of five and just give you guys, you know, maybe put two or three prizes. I mean, I know you guys don't like Harley Quinn, but I mean, if there was an event to get a Harley Quinn one. I mean, wouldn't that be maybe cool? I mean, I take anything that's free. I mean, this variant right here, that's a hot yeah. variant. Probably still. I like that. It's a cool book, man. So I might do that on Wednesday. Buy, do like five. instead. It's just too getting too expensive. You know, and basically what you guys do is basically give me like an extra five bucks for doing it. That's what you said. <laughs> International shipping, dude, it would, I, it's, it's so expensive for you guys, dude. Twenty-five dollars to ship it to like, like just a three-pack of comics somewhere in that. Yeah, that's ridiculous. To Australia, dude, you're better off buying a plane ticket and coming to the U.S. and buying some comic books, man. Well, honestly, I could probably put it in a priority mail flat rate envelope, and I think that's what thirty. I don't know. No. And if someone was going to order something like that and they paid the shipping, I would throw in a couple of books anyway. You know what I mean? Because I do want to give books to people outside of the U.S. There's a lot of people from Canada. What I would say, Mark, is come by my auctions, which are every like every every other Saturday, and we'll figure it out where I can send you a medium flat rate box and give you like a bunch of books. Um, ish, I'm locked on your issues, dude. Issues. Did you see the it Lego? No. Oh my God, dude! You gotta go get it, dude. He's he's like he's like parting ways with all his stuff. Yeah, I'm not buying. I'm not buying anything right now, man. Nothing. Nothing, dude. I'm not going to the comic shop on Wednesday. I'm not. That big thing behind you. It's a TV. Oh, is that is that new? No, it's not new. <laughs> <laughs> Why you want to buy it? I'll shut no, it man, I see a crack on it. I don't, uh, know what, I don't know what shipping is, but I'll I'll package it up real nice. You can deliver it to me. You want an Xbox? Dude, stop liquidating your shit. I'm telling you, I'll send you a little cash. Don't be pissed. I don't I don't want listen, they're just things. They can be replaced. Yeah, some money is just a thing too, dude. I don't give a well, shit. You, yeah. I don't you have, have to produce you have to produce that thing sometimes to pay bills. Look, the the truth is I don't have money, dude. I'm like scraping by, but I would always give money. Money I don't have, shit like that, to people that need it. Which is why I wouldn't ask you for it. But the thought itself counts for a lot. Thank you. I need some, Bill. Send it my way. <laughs> you, you, dude, <laughs> dude, Hulk has probably one of the most awesome, massive collections out of all of us. Because he never sold a book. 
Daniel, I don't know why I stopped doing my super secret auctions, but I need to bring them back so I can start making money again. Yeah, that's what I need to do. I need to get rid of some of my collection. Why don't you do that? Well, don't copy me, but why not? Why don't I sell stuff? Because you don't tell me when you're going to do it. I need time to start pulling stuff out and to figure well, out what's what do you mean for it. You just do a super secret auction yourself. You get like three books, you go live, and you're done in 30 minutes. Because I have like 105 subscribers. I'll have like seven people in the chat. Bullshit. Yeah, he'll be selling his books no. for like 50 cents. Yeah, I'll be selling. Here's this, you know, X Men 94. Four dollars. <laughs> Winner. <laughs> Winner. Yes, the shipping is going to cost more than I made off the book. I always started at a price that I'm willing to part with. I know, but no, but what I'm saying is if there's you don't have like seven people in the chat, dude, no one's going to buy it. How many subs? I don't know how many subs Big Lion has, but before he started getting them, he was having auctions and there were massive people in there. Whenever there's an auction, people come. It doesn't matter if they're subs. Yeah, you no, just put in I'm the title in capital letters, auction, auction, and people show up, man. <laughs> I don't know if he's being sarcastic, dude. If you want to, if you want, if you want to join me when I have a secret auction and we can auction off one or two of your books on the side, that's fine. Because my secret auctions are, I only do like three to five books, and I'm done. I might sell like a signature uh, print or just all type. If you want to jump in and like after I sell a couple, you sell one, and I sell a couple, then you sell one, and we're done. That's cool, dude. Dude, I I'll literally have to sell about. 3,000 books. Well, that's what's so and good about my... We can't do that, though. My secret auctions no, are I like... I know. I'm saying, but I'm saying I got to start somewhere and Instagram... I'll, I'll let you know when I do my next one. I just don't want to be like all the other shows. We got 30 people in there trying to sell their books, and they only sell like three books over the course of four hours. You know, yeah, because, I don't want to do that either. That's what I'm that, saying. I might as well just list them on my eBay or Instagram and... Well, not eBay. I won't sell on eBay anymore, but on Instagram. But I don't know. A bunch of cheap people on Instagram. Well, they, you know, we all want a deal. Well, that's fine, but I mean, you can't Jew me out of stuff. I mean, well, I go away, go away. I want to do a. Dude, Bueller's going off, dude. He's like drinking some coffee right now. All I see is Bueller. <laughs> hey, Bueller. He's, drink, he's, drink, he's drinking coffee as we speak. He's got a Bueller drink. <laughs> jacked up on coffee. Question I, I would like to do some more trades with you, Hulk. We gotta talk about that because I got stuff you like and I think you Dude, got... I have a ton of stuff on I'd I'd almost rather trade because I just want and I and honestly, dude, I'll trade in most people's favor. I mean I most of the trades I've done. Because if yeah. I get something I want and not put out cash, that's I'm cool with that. Basically, what I want to do with you is, you. I want Black Spider Man stuff. Dude, I have like every Black Spider Man everything. So, I have, like, Miles, like Miles Morales. No, I have, dude, I do. I have his. I don't want that though. No, but I'm saying, like, literally, said, I have like every. You said you said Black Spider Man. Man, dude, hey, calm down. How do you get drunk <laughs> off? Of, how do you get drunk off a of root beer, bro? It's not root beer. It's uh... <laughs> joking. A it's lot of like, it's a what? Is it Zima? Zima. Dude, what is that from like 1992 or something? They still make those? It's called a Purple Haze. Oh, that's cool. That's so not a Vita makes it. It's like a, it's a, it's pretty good. Well, I think Hulk's trying to show me something. Yeah, look, see, dude, I got like everything. How much you want? What do you want? I want to trade for that. You better come up with something good. Is that a new slab or is it an old slab? It's an older slab. But it's still been pressed. Has it been? No, it's not been pressed. Okay, so I want to trade for that. We'll figure something out, but don't Dude, trade. I got for six boxes. No, I got one, two, three. I got five and a half boxes of Spider Man. What about raw? Do you have raw three hundreds that are in decent condition? Yeah, I have like four or five. Would you sell those cheaper than the slab nine four? No, a couple of my raws are probably high nines. I would honestly rather buy a nine four slab than get it pressed and regraded. Whatever Bill's willing to give you, I'll give you more. <laughs> just just so he can't have it. But 
No, I mean, I got, what, Team Up 141s, Amazing Spider-Man's 252s, all. I need, I need a really clean 140. Do you have a slab not 141? No, I got I got two Raws. I got one pretty nice one. It's I haven't looked at it in a while, though. Like I said, it's hard to remember every last issue I have sitting everywhere. I mean. Yeah, the Hope 141's the one I need the most because I already have the 300. I'll, I'll pick up 300s all day, but. That Hulk one, uh, or the Mar Marvel one forty one team up. It's not as expensive, and I could probably trade for that pretty easily. What's that? Which one is that? It's the Spider Man and Daredevil. I have that. Huh? I, I have one of those in my in my. I have one. I, I have one of those in my for sale box. How? What grade is it? I don't know. I I need high grade. You're so you're so bougie. Though. Well, I don't want to keep buying low grade. I want to buy one and be done. And I also need a nice high grade spectacular Spider Man ninety. Yeah, I don't have that. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, that. Do you see? Look at uh, his. Oh, that last picture of Cyclops, dude. He had a, his thing was coming out, man. It's high grade or no grade, bro. Yeah, I got. That's my statement. Yeah. Uh, how's the newsstand copy? That's it's all right. It's not. It's not. It's probably like an eight five. Does it have a color break? Uh, the main part is it has a ding in the corner. It has one tiny color break. Do they I both? The one though is pretty much. There's no visible flaws on it. All right, well, let's trade for the that one, and then we'll do that later. But yeah, if you if you're okay with moving that, I'll do it. All right, wait, wait. Oh, oh, wait. What? Wait a second. Is she trying to give me a better deal? Ooh, newsstand color break. Uh, on the spine, uh, one small one. One real, one real small one right here in the uh, in the middle. Yeah, I got to pass on that. But I you're love still, it. You're so bougie. I'm going to still send you money, though. You can't stop me. <laughs> I don't, want, I don't want money. You can't stop me, dude. Uh, so, yeah, I'll trade you Hulk on that. Now, if you have a Spectacular 90, I'll, I'll want one of those, too. You probably don't collect Spectacular 90s, though. I have, dude, I'm telling you, I have, like, is that the red cover? No, it's the black one. I thought that was. Uh, I think Black Widow's on it. Oh. Um, it's okay. You don't need to look for it right now. I think we're getting close to ending though, because we've been on for over two hours, I think. And uh, my video is about to drop in four minutes, so. So what's your point? Uh, no it's, one cares. Almost, it's almost midnight. No one cares. But yeah, I'm down to sell some books no, or trade. No, no one cares. No you one cares. You shut your mouth when you're talking to me. Yeah. No one cares about your fucking video. Whatever, y'all gonna be watching it. Don't worry. Oh, I'm not gonna be watching. Gonna be I know watching. you don't watch Hulk. You just subscribed to me. I just yesterday. subscribed to you. I told you the other night. I just subscribed. Dude, it's so funny. <laughs> Uh, you know, you I you've been help. asking him. You've been asking him every show we do together for the last like three weeks. Hope, did you see my show the other day? And he's like, "No, nah, I didn't catch it." And then he just subscribed to you like twenty six hours ago. It's so funny, like because of uh, the email, it it tells me everyone that subscribes like when they do. Some people, it's so weird. They go back and forth. They'll unsubscribe and they'll subscribe. That's how I can tell who the haters are or whatever. But uh, I see this. I hope that's just right. Five hours ago, I'm like, what the hell? I sent these guys the pictures. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> I, I don't know. That was funny. Whatever, dude. Hey, well, see, now it means a lot more. Now that I subscribe to you, it means I genuinely care. And I might watch one of your videos. That's, that's, yeah, right. Mike, I said, Mike. Well, I'm sub to you, so whatever. Of course you are. And I'm sub to issues too, and he doesn't even do anything. That's, that's so nice. that's so dumb. I don't understand yeah. why anyone would subscribe to my page. I did it for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> Hopefully one day I'll get a message. Uh, you know, 
the issues posted a video. That would be he's, just gonna, if, he's just gonna come on screen and go fuck you, Bill. Yeah. No, you know what? I'll just I'll post something that just makes no sense. I'm gonna post like a woodworking video. Do you like a uh, a buy uh, Wayne Enterprises video or something? That'd be great. I have to look into that. Is that available on uh, on uh, E Trade? E Trade? It's, it's it's exclusive. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, Bueller said he's gonna subscribe to me. Yes, thank you, Matt. Oh man, so Tom said something so funny to me, so funny to me last night. Uh, I feel like I should bring it up, but it's Ooh. just really funny. Uh, so I messaged Comic Tom, right? I messaged him like three weeks ago, and I said, "Hey, I got this uh, through Instagram. I got this Gemini comic supply thing with twenty uh, percent off if you use economics. So if you want to use it for your boxes that you sell or whatever." Use it, and you'll save some money. Because I, I wasn't sure if he was using them or not. I think and, he uses, like, bigger boxes, like the white boxes. Or do you oh, switch from those? You can pack it in there, and you can put it in the white priority ship things. Whatever. He he told me he makes his own. Uh, he has some made for him or something. And uh, what's so funny is he goes, oh, thanks so much, Bill. I see you in the chat a lot. I didn't know you had a YouTube channel. I'll subscribe now. <laughs> I just go, go, come on, man. Come on, really? Not everybody knows who you are. Don't be, so full, don't be, so, full, don't be so full of yourself, Bill. I know. You know Your head's not going to fit on that screen. You're going to have to get yeah. a panoramic camera. I just thought it was funny. I think maybe he was joking with me. I told him, I said that's funny. I needed a good laugh. So, But he hasn't subscribed yet. I can tell you that. I've been watching. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. You know, but he actually, uh, he he actually messaged me yesterday and bought a book for me uh, because of everything that was going on. So, oh, that's uh, awesome. So that was that was cool. So, um, like I said, man, it's, it's been pretty cool. A lot of people reaching out and uh, just being nice. So, no, I, I guess we're, I, I guess uh, I guess we're friends now. Well, now I know that exactly what's going on. I'll I'll look through it and see if I can find something I like. I, none of it's available to you. It's all sold. Oh, okay, cool. Save me. We don't. We don't take money from your kind here. No, oh, come on, man. All right. Well, I think we had another good show, man. You know why? Because you're you're gonna pay me for my comics with the super chat money that you're supposed to give me anyway. So well, maybe that's how I can donate. So I'll send you money. <laughs> I'll send you money. You're like, dude, I want your money. I say, what's your super chat money, bro? And then you, you, you all, all, like, all two dollars and sixty one cents of it. <laughs> I might <laughs> send a, a little extra to cover the next shows we do, so I don't have to hear about it. <laughs> You better. I don't know about Hulk, though. Yeah, you know. better. I know where you live. <laughs> I'll find you. I'll stalk you. I'll creep on you from your window. Dude, I, it's a little scary because I kind of believe it a little bit. No, he's dead serious. I no, know. I'm dead serious. I know right where you live. You're not that far of a drive. And I'm actually headed out that way in June. For a, He's heading out for a Brody convention. Bueller, two dollars. Thanks, man. He's just trying to make it worse for Bueller, me. Bueller, it's three dollars. You can't split two dollars that easily. <laughs> yeah, but when you press it at one fifty, then it's even harder to split. So it's two. So it's sixty-six cents each. Uh, make it even dollar each. It's much easier. Uh, what was I going to say? What are you coming out here for? Are you coming uh, out? We're here? going out to we're going out to Vegas in June for a vacation. You know what's interesting is I think. June might be Vegas con. Oh, yeah, even better. Yeah, the Bronies I, are going to be there. Did you already plan it? No, we, we were just talking about going in June, having a little family vacay thing. Because I said I've always wanted to go to Torpedo one time. So maybe look into when their con is. Because I've been, you know, a couple months back, maybe about three, four months ago, I was talking to Bueller about possibly – Meeting Bueller and doing something with Bueller. That's what she said. At Bueller, Bueller said he's going on a road trip soon, right? Is he is he going in your area? I thought he was on a road trip. No, he yeah, he messaged me today about saying he's going through Flagstaff, but it's about two and a half hours north of me. I told him, you know, don't worry about it, bro. We'll see each other another time. Just enjoy your vacation. I don't want to make him stop or go a different way out of his, you know, a couple hours out of his way to come see me. Is he, going, is he going on vacation or is he doing just like a 
I believe he's going to with his son on vacation to see his daughter in a fitness competition or something like that. Oh, that's awesome. I think so, his daughter's like a professional fitness uh whatever like like I don't know, Hulk, you probably know it better than I what they call it, but I don't know what she is. She like a physique competitor or, or the I think it's something like that. Uh Bueller could probably tell us right now. But she's definitely a professional. I believe it's her first actual tournament or something. I think I've seen a video. I think she That's has a YouTube, cool. I think she has a YouTube channel. So and how far I, are you from Vegas? Oh, I'm in Phoenix, man. I said, how far are you from Vegas? One and a half hours. I know where you live. I have, dude. I have your. I got a picture, satellite pictures of your house. I know right where my point of entry is. <laughs> yeah, I got my point of entry on you too. Hey, do you ever? She said. Do you ever bump into uh, Mitch Garretts? He he lives out there in, in uh, Arizona. I feel like you're about to hit me with a weird joke. No, I'm being dead serious. I like him. He's uh, one of my favorite artists. Um, he's, an, he, he's an Arizona guy. I think he lives out near Phoenix somewhere. It's possible. Uh, so yeah. I just, just didn't know if he like does more local stuff around there since that's his like home base. Well, there's a lot of locals out here. There's like Marat Michaels. There's... Uh, I'm trying to get a bunch of the local guys that have kind of made it big and do like independent or they have covers and different things. Um, and I'm starting to reach out to them. Well, Bueller, if they made it big, they left Arizona. No, they're still here. No. I, I make think it big, not, leave Arizona. You know, I heard Middleton lives out here somewhere. And you know McFarland does. So, uh, Thomas of Bueller, yeah, it's her first tournament and she's going to kill it. Fantastic so, 452. Yeah. I think he's going – do you have an FF48? Uh, anyway, uh, I think he's going to take him and his son, and they're going to go on the road trip and have a good time. Uh, Is 52 the uh, first Black Panther? Yeah, I think it is. I know 48 is the book I'm looking for. No, that's – yeah, that's the uh, Silver Surfer and Galactus. But, uh, which that book is super expensive, too. I think it dropped, though. It's an ugly freaking cover, though, man. She's on Instagram. She is like a superhero. Might have. That was a fantastic I've never seen. Oh, Oh, well, how much is that? I don't know. I just it was just sitting there. That's a great. That's a great. That's a great cover, man. I love that book, Craven. Love it. Oh, my video is up. They're telling me. Well, you guys can watch it in a little bit. We're we're finishing up here. Um. I did my new comic book day video in a golf cart today, so <laughs> I was driving down the course, so it's kind of interesting. Still haven't told me how far are you from Vegas. He said four, four and a half hours. Four and a half hours? Four and a half hours? Oh, that ain't bad. You can zip over. What do I need? What do you want to? What do you want me to see me we for? We go to Vegas Con. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'll He's gonna up. bring you a brony costume, and you guys can brony it up together. Says the brony himself. I, mean, I don't have a brony costume. Yes, I'm you not do. A bro Everybody's seen it. No, bro I'm not a brony. <clears throat> I think it would be interesting to have yeah, like, different, different, different people like meet at a con. Like I know, dude, the whole YouTube is going to C2E2. Like everybody. And as much as cool as that is, it's like, meh. So I think it'd be cool if there's only a couple people meeting up at a certain place. Like Comic says he's oh uh Bueller's going through Vegas on the way back. All right, well have fun. Oh, cheetah. Hey, Bueller, if you go to Vegas, go to that big store. Uh, that big, who's the dude, the rock and roll dude that owns that comic book store? Torpedo. System oh, of yeah. Death. Yeah, go to the Torpedo, dude. I've always wanted to go there. <clears throat> they have kick-ass signing events there all the time, man. Yeah, they get local. They get, like, J. Scott Campbell. They have everyone there. Like, yeah, just crazy. Up to their... So you can roll out there in June. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, let's try. We'll figure it out. We got time. I'll 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 do some investigating, and if it works out, we'll uh, hang you out. You ain't got a job. You ain't doing shit. You can roll I out there. I gotta pay to get out there, dude. I'm gonna have to start selling my stuff. Sell off a few things. Get some gas money. Send off some, you know, penis pics. <laughs> Make some money. We'll do an auction. We'll do an. Uh, we'll do an auction for a night with Bill. Yeah. yeah. We need strip club money. 
for le- for legal reasons, we cannot say that you will get anything. But as two consenting adults, you guys can decide what you're comfortable with at a later time. Whoever wins gets a night a night with Bill. There we go. Oh, what a great idea, guys! I great... think it's a great. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna start a drive to see if uh, if I can raise some money if I choke slam Bill. I'm just kidding. Dude, I'll choke you. That's you. I'll choke you. You gonna leg press me? No, I'm gonna put something in your mouth. That's <laughs> what? Is it too far? Yeah, I think you crossed the line. Okay. I mean, I think when you're when you're on YouTube at like three in the morning, I don't think there's a line. Yeah, I'm but it can be replayed. But I didn't say what I was gonna put. I got some pickles. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. He's got, some uh, meatball- he's got some meatballs in the fridge. My uh, stepson's arriving tomorrow morning as well, so I got to go pick him up from the airport. So I'm going to end it. All right. It's been an interesting show, guys. I enjoyed it. I hope you think my picks were good or what? It's just kind does, of anyone, right. does anyone ever ask him if his dad is Andy Garcia or Ron Jeremy? <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep hitting me with that, don't you guys? <laughs> You're like Ron Jeremy's illegitimate bastard. <laughs> You're not talking about a young Ron Jeremy either. You're talking about like the old, retire- like nasty, wrinkled, yeah. like living. A yeah, car I'm talking. Ron I'm Jeremy. talking about like Boondock Saints Ron Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I did not. Well, you guys, that's some bullshit, guys. You guys are bad, dude. That's Andy not- Garcia and Ron Jeremy boinked in the car. That's your result. <laughs> Oh, man. I should have ended this 15 minutes ago. I would have saved myself. Ron Jeremy and Andy Garcia docking. <laughs> oh, God. Come on, man. That ain't, dude, that's it. You should have never said that, dude. I got it. You, you went too far now. I know. Well, Ron, I thought you were ending the video, so I thought we were off, <laughs> off air. Ron, Ron, Ron Jeremy had an ass baby with Andy Garcia. Dude, come on. All right, you guys. I, I got to let go. They're going too far, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you later.